and then all the way over towards Kingwood. And we're watching as the system's gonna continue to push its way through the Houston metro area, down towards areas like Angleton and Lake Jackson. And one of the threats there is that- They haven't seen anything yet today. We've even seen some sunshine. They've had some clearing a tad. Yep. Take a look at this. This is the Northwest Freeway at Skinner. Roads are soggy out there. Look at the spray. Yeah, I was just gonna say, look at that northbound side over to the right side of your screen how much nasty spray that is. I believe, what am I looking at there? That's, yeah, okay. And then that's, that's 290 at uh, 1960 up there on the north side. So, I mean, we're gonna see very similar conditions, I think, with all of these 290 shots there, is that, and look at that right there, that truck over on the feeder road. And you see just how, and I believe that drainage ditch, am I looking at that, Andy Lee? am I looking at that right? That drainage ditch over on the left side there? Yep. It okay. looks like it's about to overflow its banks. Yeah, that's starting to fill as well. Um, so quick recap of some things we've been watching or monitoring the last couple of hours here. We do still have a ground stop at IH. Is that correct? Intercontinental still under ground stop as, as far as we know. We have Devin Clark that's out headed towards the airport. We have a severe thunderstorm warning out there. And it looks like we just got a new one. And that was that, that storm we were watching to the south mm -hmm. there, right? Yep. What does that one go to? Let's so, tell me about that one. This severe thunderstorm warning is for Fort Bend, Harris, and Wharton counties going until 2 o'clock. So that includes Needville, Rosenberg, Sugar Land, even up to areas in Far West University in Bel Air. Main concern is going to be 60 mile per hour wind gusts. But the National Weather Service is also indicating that there's enough rotation with this one that it's not out of the question that there could be a tornado rain wrapped. So within this warning, make sure you take it seriously. Stay yeah. away from the windows, head indoors. I think that rotation that they were watching was kind of near Kendleton. Yeah, I was gonna say, I could see the really bright green mm -hmm. colors here. It looks like we've got a big push of the, the so sometimes when, when, when you look at, at these velocity products as well, and again, that's the wind direction, either going towards the radar site or going away from the radar site. When you get some of these really bright, almost like neon, you know, highlighter green colors, it's an indication that you've got a super strong wind push mm -hmm. coming in. One of the reasons probably why they put that warning on there, if we've got wind gusts, if the, if the storm itself is, is, is moving at about 40 miles an hour and we've got wind gusts of 60 out ahead of that, mm -hmm. uh, that's enough to take down some tree limbs and, and certainly some, some power outages. Do we have a, a, anybody, do we have an update on center point for power outages? I know we were at what, like 20, we, we, 23,000, we something like that. We were at least at 16 to 20,000. 33 now. 33,000. Okay. So there we go. That, that number is going to continue to build. If you're within that severe warning, definitely make sure your phone is plugged in. That warning, by the way, includes Sugarland, Missouri City, Rosenberg, Stafford, Bel Air, West U, Richmond, Hunters Creek, Bunker Hill Village, Piney Point, Mission Bin, Town West, Pecan Grove, a lot of locations, even Spring Branch West, First Colony, yeah. Attics Park 10. This is all spots we're watching, including the Astrodome area. So w damaging wind gusts could cause more power outages. Well, and what's interesting, if you look at that map there, we're, we're, we're seeing it looks right. You, you mentioned uh, Minute Maid a second ago. Mm -hmm. Downtown just to the east side, That, if I'm reading that right, guys, and you tell me if I'm not, that says 21,000 customers without power in that area just in that little area there. I thought that was a two, I think that's 21. If that's the case, then I I've got to- I think it is. Uh, if that's the case, I've got to believe that's a transformer that got, that got blown or, or a substation or something um, because that is a lot of power outages in a very small area. Yeah, because we're looking at, there's about what, 5,000 in Westview there, Myerland, but two towards the Med Center, three and a half in Bel Air, we're counting in the thousands. Yeah, just over a thousand towards Memorial. So yeah, so you know, and, and, and we figured this would be the case with the strong winds, not only that, but we're talking about with the lightning coming through too. Lightning d doesn't care what it hits. It's just, it's just gonna hit something. And obviously if it's hitting substations, it's gonna knock out those areas. Um, and then once goes, once one goes, it, it trips the whole system and, and, and they're gone from there. All right, so come back to us here. Let's talk about the other big issue here. And, and, and we've been kind of, I don't want to say it's taken a bit of a back seat, but it sort of has considering we've had the flooding and the, the severe weather component is the winds are really going to start picking up in some spots as well. These are current winds. If you look, 
Right. I wanted to show you Houston. By That's the way. crazy, and and that may be another reason why these power outages too. Some of these lines just may not be. You know, some of the some of the power lines themselves. If if you go in some of the neighborhoods, you see the line is holding like this. It's not going to take much. If you got a 56 mile an hour wind that's just knocking that over. I mean, this is tropical storm force winds here, here, basically there, right? And I then mean, everybody Pearland, else in the 20s and 30s, right? mile per hour. We're talking sustained winds as well. This yeah. is not the gusts. Gusts have been even higher than this. So that's going to be the concern. But a lot of these locations also are getting the heavy downpour. So it could be thunderstorm force winds. That's likely why we're seeing some of these. Yeah. All right, so here's what we've got so far. We're approaching 1.30, so I'm going to give you an update on what we're seeing. If you're uh, joining us, if you've lost power, if you're one of the, uh, you know, 31,000, 33,000 now folks that have lost power, hopefully you're joining us on KPRC2 Plus on the app or at clicktohouston.com as well. So thank you for staying with us here. We always appreciate being able to help you out. I'm meteorologist Justin Stapleton. I'm here with meteorologist Caroline Brown. We also have Lisa and Andy over at the news desk monitoring uh, school delays, closures, after-school activities, ground stops, center point outages, everything else that's happening out there. Not only that, but of course, any of the big crashes that we're seeing out there too. We've got our storm trackers, that box that you see uh, just to the uh, left of me there. Those are our storm trackers. We have our own Devin Clark out there. We have Rowan Belogan, I believe, that was out. He may be coming back now since he was working mm -hmm. the morning shift. Uh, but we also have Sabira Rayford that's out on North Fry Road that's been running in to some pretty decent flooding as well. Uh, and we've got crews all over the area. So we're going to kind of keep you straight and give you an idea of what we're saying or what we're seeing, I should say, over the next couple of hours. So we've had tornado warnings that have popped up earlier today. We've had one, at least one that we know of, confirmed tornado that was on the ground from a storm spotter down yes. south, right? From mm -hmm. south and southwest. We do not have any active tornado warnings now. That's the good news. We have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings that we are watching. Then, of course... The other big story that will probably start to pivot as we get into the afternoon and into the evening is the flood concern. We've got aerial flood advisories, all of these green boxes that you see, basically from North Harris County all the way on down south of Wharton. Those are aerial flood advisories, an indication that we've seen some heavy rain, two, three, four inches. And then, of course, this box right here, our biggest trouble spot, Caroline, is our flash flood warning. That is for areas that have picked up close to five inches of rain, and there's more rain coming at them right outside of Sealy. That's where we're going to run into our biggest trouble spot, I think, right now. That definitely is the biggest trouble spot. And right now, it does seem like the biggest concern is going to be the flooding risk there, those flood advisories extending nearly to the woodlands. In fact, speaking of the woodlands, our very own Sabira Rayford is heading up towards the woodlands. Sabira, can you tell us specifically where you are and how the conditions are looking out there? Well, the rain is continuing to pour down. Caroline, we are headed northeast on 99 towards the woodlands. We have some people with their hazards on, some people driving pretty slow. So continuing to pour down, and at certain points of the shoulder, it can get pulled up and, and kind of pouring into the highway here. But we're going over an overpass right now, so we're not seeing too much of that. However, before we did, and the rain is continuing to come down, we are on 99 heading northeast towards the woodlands. Sabira, uh, I know you, you've been sort of my drain ditch reporter here that's been out in the field giving us a really good idea and an indication of what we're seeing in terms of places that are running into trouble. When you were on Fry Road, we were, you were showing us that those drain ditches are full and in many spots we're starting to spill over. What are the conditions that you're seeing on 99 in terms of where the water is being able to, to be held up at this point? It is much better here um, from what I'm seeing from my vantage point right now. Back on Fry Road, I mean, man, it was really pulling up right when you guys actually um, went into another section of the this coverage. We really started to see some pool, um, pooling up uh, of water and the rain coming down. Right now here on 99, it's, it's honestly not too bad, but you are starting to see them fill up. Okay, sounds good. We're heading good. also right now to, uh, right now actually, let's see what Willow Creek looks like. Okay. Um, we're heading towards, yeah, just bear with us one second. Sure, so no, go ahead. Take a look at that conditions over here to the right. Yep, take your time. Um, yeah, that's pretty full. Okay. If you, if you can look right now um, to, let's see what's showing up on the screen. You see that right here? We're passing towards Willow Creek, um, heading towards Cypress Rose Hill Road, about a half a mile from that. 
That is pretty cool, I would say, Justin. Can you take a look and see that right there? Yeah, I can see yeah. it. I, I agree. That does look pretty full. Looks like it's holding for it's now. Pretty full. It's, it is. It is. But it, it's, it's, yeah, it's holding for now, I would say. Um, it looks like we have an emergency crew right up here to the left. Let's see what's going on up here on the other um, bound of the road. Um, it looks like some cars are being towed right there, so we don't know what happened there, but that looks okay. pretty clear as of traffic conditions. It looks like they're just clearing that area right now as we head um, passing Tomball Stadium um, to our left right here. Okay. Have you seen any other crashes on your way going northward up there on 99 so far? Uh, to be honest, I'm surprised. We have not seen anything, but that is a great thing. As we all know, we have people have really been um, heeding these conditions, um, driving slowly, and not a lot of traffic at this time. But I'm going to be curious to see what it looks like um, as we continue through this lunch hour. But I think people are, for the most part, staying put and only heading out, it seems, if they need to kind of head out on this road. Yeah, smart move, that's for sure. All right, Sabir Rayford up on 99, headed north towards the Woodlands. Thank you very much, my dear. Be safe. Uh, certainly, as before, as I said, if you see anything out there that uh, catches your eye that you need to let us know about, uh, certainly let the booth know and uh, jump back on with us here, okay? All right. Very good. Okay. All right. What do we got going on, Caroline? So we're still monitoring these storms to the north, but I do want to shift our focus. I want to talk a bit more about the coast. We haven't been mentioning them, but we've been watching them and monitoring conditions. And yeah. we're starting to see some storms that are stronger, not severe, but certainly worth mentioning. They're pushing their way to the northeast at about 45 miles per hour. These are just along the coast there. They're capable of producing 40 to 50 mile per hour gusts. So yeah. even though we haven't seen a lot of power outages down to the south. These storms will be capable of producing it. Currently rolling through Bay City, those are heading towards Angleton, Lake Jackson. Eventually these ones will be making it to Galveston as well. So not severe, but strong storms pushing through Bay City. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and I'm noticing too that we're starting to get some real action on this storm that's got that severe thunderstorm warning on it. That's one goes to two. 30? That severe thunderstorm warning is going to be in place mm. until until 2, two o'clock, Canberra. Thank okay, you. two o'clock. Meteorologist got it. Canberra Marshall here as well. Yeah, we got that. All right. Uh, so while we're talking about this, guys in the booth, if you can, or, or Canberra, if you, if you can grab over there, if you could take our, our Southwest Freeway cam and swing it south, I want to get a sense of, of just how much lightning's coming at us because this is coming right towards the Cape Air C2 studios here. So I'll give everybody a minute. So that's what it looks like. So is that, is that uh, southbound side there, guys? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So that's what it is. So anyway, we're going to watch this real quick because my guess is over the next 10 minutes or so, maybe closer to five, uh, we're going to see the skies really start to light up. So uh, you guys watch that in the booth there. If you happen to see things really starting to get sparking, uh, let me know and we'll go to that because I want to give everybody an idea of what we're seeing. How much lightning is that, Caroline? We have seen 509 lightning strikes in the last 15 minutes, and that's going to be for the areas of Sugarland, yeah. Missouri City, Rosenberg, all of these locations. I guarantee you, you hear these storms out there in Siena. It's getting loud. And it's getting loud, and it's also really heavy rainfall. It's yeah. possible that you hear that roar that you hear sometimes. Sometimes with We've heard it on all the storm trackers, course. right? Every yeah. single one from, from Devon to, mm -hmm. to Rilwan to Sabir a second ago. And it, it, you know, it sounds like they're in a jet engine, and that's just because of the, the, the intense rainfall that's coming down in that point. Uh, I would say, what are our rainfall rates on this uh, as well? I'll give you a sec to find out that. So what's interesting is that we're starting to see this whole... This whole line or this whole sort of almost like a like a vacuum tube if you want to think of it that way That's just been blasting its way from East Bernard to Katy on over in towards Northwest Harris County all of, Yeah, about two two and a half almost three inches. That sounds right. Yeah, that's what we've been seeing all day Yeah, so this whole this tube that's just been training over the exact same areas It's giving those aerial flood advisories and that flash flood warning is starting to slowly shift south that's good, but that also means areas that have not seen a whole lot of action today, and I know I'll get them too. I'll get those, those messages from folks saying, I'm down in Danbury. I haven't seen anything yet so far. Just wait, my friend. You'll probably see it in about the next 30 minutes. Things are going to start getting pretty noisy. But the good news is, is that we're starting to get a bit of a break back off to the west here as well. So notice where our, our uh, flash flood warning is out towards Sealy. The heavy rain that was already falling there is starting to shift a little further south. And man, that is some good news out that way because we've got to let places start to drain out here or we're going to continue to run into some troubles as we get in towards this evening. 
Absolutely, those rivers and streams need to be drying out. I do wanna take a look at the velocity with this storm because the National Weather Service just continues to re-up this warning and they are keeping on that tornado possible tag. Yeah, It's not a tornado warning, but because there's enough rotation. Strong enough to just watch it. Strong enough to watch it, strong enough to say, take this one seriously. Don't go stand outside, don't stand by the window. I know, right. it's, I know it's fun to watch, but it can be dangerous though. Even just the winds alone, yeah. that can bring down tree branches. That can turn really anything in your yard into a projectile when yeah. we're talking about 50 mile per hour wind gusts. Yep. And the risk here is actually up to 60 miles per hour. Yeah, that 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 small, you know, plastic furniture that that I had in my backyard, you know, for many many years, that stuff will that take flamingo off will be in the neighbor's the yard. Flamingo will be flying. That is for sure. All right, Lisa, what you got? I do for all the parents and grandparents who are yeah. out there who are going to be wanting to get in the car in the next 45 to an hour to get in the pickup line for the kiddos. Yeah. What's that timeline looking like? Are they going to be in a mess out there? Uh, depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. I think some places are. Let's go to the future cast. Let me let me just kind of set the stage on this here, and then we'll have. Caroline pop through this as we go, is that this has been initializing really well. What do I mean by that? Meaning that what the radar is showing is what our future cast is showing. And when those two line up, that gives us really good confidence. That allows me not to get any more gray hair, that this is what's really going to happen as we go into the next couple of hours. So let's ask that, let's ask that question, Lisa. So let's talk about, I think the further west you are, if we're talking about, let's say, Waller ISD out to Sealy ISD, your chances of the next hour or so are going to be a lot better in terms of getting the kids. But there are going to be some trouble spots, too. There are definitely going to be some trouble spots, so let's walk you through them as we go towards 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. We're still going to be seeing it, especially for areas on the east side of town, from Bay City all the way through portions of League City, even Northern League City, will start to see this by 2.30, 3 o'clock. But right. look at areas in the heights. The heights very well could be clearing out because we're going to be clearing from the northwest yep. to the southeast. So 3 o'clock, still seeing it south and east of Houston, rolling through rather quickly by this point. At 4 o'clock, it does look like conditions here are much better. When you see just the green and the yellow, that's going to be light to moderate rainfall. But this is when we'll start to see some bigger problems at the coast for right. areas that haven't seen it for five o'clock by the coast. This is when they're really going to see the intense storms. I will say by five o'clock conditions will be much better. Now, if your kiddos are in school, one other thing I do want to add is schools actually tend to be one of the safest spots when it comes to riding out storms. Those buildings are built for it. It's, yeah. it's a place you want to be. It's a sturdy structure. Yep. Yep. Good idea. So to answer your question, Lisa, I think in terms of two to three o'clock, if you're out towards Waller, Sealy, even Katy mm -hmm. ISD, I think you should be okay at that point. Now, that said, you saw what Fry Road looks like, right? Okay. So I think that's an issue too, is that you've got to figure out in your neighborhood, uh, if you know there's a road around your child's school that always floods, maybe take a different route. Um, what was it? It's off of um, Gessner, off of, of 10. It, it, I got caught one time going to pick up one of my daughters and it was just flooded out. So I thought, oh, we'll just go through the neighborhood. Oh no, whole neighborhood was flooded out at that oh, point. God. So we were all stuck. 20 yeah. cars were like, well, we're not going anywhere until this drains, right? So be careful for that. But I think if you're on the east side, as you mentioned, League City, Deer Park, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Channel View, Pasadena, right? Baytown. Kima, if you're in those areas by about 2.33 o'clock for pickup, I think it is likely going to be a mess. So if you have a chance, text your kiddo and just say, hey, like you said, schools are safe places. They're usually fairly sturdy. 
write it out with your friends. We'll come get you as soon as it's okay for that. Um, or, you know, it may be something that, that you've got to try to figure out if there is a window. Uh, otherwise, down on the island by 3, 4 o'clock, we could be running into some problems as well for folks in yeah. Galveston ISD. Andy. Uh, meteorologist uh, Jeff Linder with Harris County Flood Control just tweeted this out less than a minute ago. He said 5.48 inches in three hours in Northwest Harris County, significant street flooding mm. is ongoing. He just tweeted that out 59 seconds ago. Yeah. So that's certainly in the Northwest part of the county. Is gonna be an issue. Is gonna be an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Parents are thinking and, about and for, bus routes. And for oh, bus for, routes. Oh, for the bus routes for sure, yeah. 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 yeah, okay. All right, so here we go. Let's go back to Sabira Rayford. She is out on, night. just on as you said, Andy, look at this. Here's Sabira. That's look, that's 99. Guys, take a look at this right now. This just came through right here. We're 99 Northeast. We're heading towards Glenlock Forest, Forest Drive. As you can see, some flooding there. People do not slow down. This is going to be a hazardous area. We just slowly pulled through it. I mean, but at a time, we were all just stopped. All the cars here on 99 trying to figure out how to navigate through that that flooding water. And if that, this water keeps coming down, I mean, that's only going to get worse. Thankfully, we just carefully made it through this area. People are slowing down. But all it takes is one person speeding down this road. So please drive carefully in that area I just mentioned. We're heading towards Glenlock Northeast on 99, heading towards the woodlands. Okay, so that was right around Glenlock. Is that what you're saying, Sabira? Yes, Glenlock. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, good. Thank you. That's, that's, yeah. I mean, that's going to be one of the issues we're going to deal with here as well. And it, what do you get over there? Andy? Montgomery County OEM tweeted out uh, less than 30 minutes ago, 45 in sawdust, the southbound entrance in passable Woodlands Parkway right. and the forest outside lane, not passable Fish Creek thoroughfare, 2854 right lane, not passable. So okay. they are just getting inundated getting crushed up, up there. there. Yeah. Well, and we figured that was going to be part of the issue too, right? Is that you've got, you've got areas that have already gotten a couple of inches of rain. They didn't get a chance to drain, so mm -hmm. they're just getting pounded again with more rain as it starts to move on through at this point. So, you know, let's go back to what we were just talking about a second ago when, when Lisa mentioned the bus routes, of course, trying to get to the kiddos. Those areas we all just mentioned, 99 up there towards Glenlock, uh, Montgomery County, right outside towards the Woodlands. These are all going to be spots that you're probably going to have to delay at least 30 minutes. Because, and, and, and look, let's, let's use one of our trouble spots so far, Katie. We're starting to see some improvement out here across the greater Katy area, which is great, right? Mm -hmm. But it's going to take what? At least a half hour for some of these spots to drain to the point where, where some of these drainage ditches are going to have to take time to get water off the road just so they can put it back in the ditch before it starts to go down to the point where these, some of these roads are going to be passable again. Absolutely. And those streams are flowing downstream. Oh, so there you go. even folks that aren't seeing it anymore, we have a brand new tornado warning. That's the one we to were let watching you know too. About. We were watching this one for rotation. This tornado warning is in place for Brazoria and Fort Bend County. And it is a very distinctive rotation yeah, here. We go. It's where you have the red and the green close to each other. This is that rotation. This tornado warning in place through two o'clock this afternoon. So that's going to be in place for another another 15 minutes here. That includes Thompson's, Sienna, Fresno. This system moving quick. It's moving to the northeast at 45 miles per hour. So if you are within the tornado warning, you need to be seeking shelter immediately. Interior room, lowest level, as many walls between yourself and the outside as possible. Yeah, is that a radar indicated from uh, Weather Service? This is a radar indicated okay. tornado warning. It was located specifically near Thompson's or about 10 miles south of First Colony. And like I said, it's booking yeah, so it. Right it's, about it with It's moving to the northeast at 45, 45. miles per hour. Okay. And those bright colors, that's going to be indicating that it's picking up on very strong winds higher up in the atmosphere, winds of over 60 miles per hour and potentially stronger the higher up you go. Yeah. But this system moving really quickly, let's back it up. I was going to say, yeah, let's you run a loop on this and see the, the way it's been it moving. It's moving almost east northeast it yeah. has a big easterly component to it and that's going to be concerning definitely if you are in thompson sienna you need to be moving into your safe spot iowa colony if this continues on this track it will be moving through 288 and i know we don't get a lot of tornado warnings around here so justin i think it's a good idea if we just remind them of some tornado sure. safety because tornado warning means you need to be seeking shelter 
immediately. Yeah, and you know, it's one of these two, you get into some of those areas if we're talking about uh, mobile homes, for example, apartment complexes, areas that may not be as sturdy. The more walls you can get in between you and what's happening outside, the better off it is. If you've got a central hallway, closets, uh, you know, bathrooms, usually fairly sturdy as well. Uh, so this is the thing, you know, and, and unlike if you're up in Oklahoma or in the Midwest, they have tornado warning sirens that'll start to pop off and people a lot of times will use those. Here we generally don't have those across much of Southeast Texas because we just don't have as big of a tornado threat as they do up as you get up, up across the plains. However, we've got the ingredients in place today where we've already had, what, now three, this is four, I think, fourth tornado warning of the day. This is fourth tornado warning of the day. So I thought, yeah. So this tornado warning though is in place until two o'clock. And another thing I want to mention, if you're in an apartment complex and you're not sure where you should go, you want to go to the lowest level of the apartment complex and try to go to the most interior room. You want to head inward. Parking garage, not a bad idea. If it's enclosed, a shared laundry room, that's always a good spot. And it can't hurt. If you happen to have your bike helmet, toss it on, yep. grab a pillow for the kiddos to put around their head and make sure you bring your pets with you into your tornado safe spot. That's right, if you're spooked, they're spooked. Mm -hmm. You know, especially I can tell you, the distinguished gentleman will probably be underneath the covers when these storms are coming through, 100%. Uh, all right, so that's one of the issues we've got out there. We've also got severe thunderstorm warnings just to the north of that from Sugarland to Rosenberg. That's one of the other uh, big storm systems that we're watching from there to Mission Bend. We're seeing some improvement, though. I always like to go a little glass half full here. Areas around Sealy. Katy out to Brookshire and Fulshire. We're finally starting to get a little bit of a break. So it means that this system is moving further south and east. It's just taking its time to do that. And unfortunately, it is going to take over the next probably two hours for that to happen. So this is what it looks like. And, and, and even if we didn't have a tornado warning on that, I mean, that's just a wall of lightning at this point. In fact, uh, guys, could you pop? Yeah, there we go. Could you give me a full screen of our uh, uh, tower cam there. So that's our tower cam right here at the KPRC2 studios. That's looking southbound on 59 back towards uh, that big storm cluster that's headed at us. Um, and we've got basically what looks to be sort of whiteout conditions here in terms of the heavy rain, wind, and, and uh, the lightning, which is going to be the other big issue here as well. I mean, just that storm system that we were watching, you saw the cluster of lightning, 908 lightning strikes within a 15-minute period. This system is so electric out there and I know when you hear tornado warning I have to say this because I lived in Oklahoma don't go outside and try to see it there is no tornado chasing on a day like today it is just a wallop of rain out there so if there is a tornado it would be a rain wrapped tornado yeah, that would see be the moving lightning there through too. yeah very electric system there and it is moving its way towards the northeast at about 45 miles per hour which is why you're not going to have to be in your pantry for very long. Head there and stay there until the tornado warning has expired. It's expected to expire at two. Of course, we'll continue to update as we look towards that area. This is the Southwest Freeway at University Boulevard and actually, you can see not just the heavy rainfall on the road. Look roads, at it going sideways. It's going sideways. It's blowing across the highway. And this is one of those moments where if you're driving down the highway, it's likely a little bit difficult. Both hands on the steering wheel. And this is at the Brazos River and, you know, the highway looking a little bit like a river in some spots. Yeah, it certainly is. That's what we've been watching up towards 99, you know, Sabir Rayford, I keep going back to this, but I think that's going to be one of our trouble spots for this afternoon once we finally get the rain to move on out of here up around uh, Clay Road, Bear Creek Reservoir, Attucks Reservoir, those areas always flood when we get heavy rain coming through there. There's one of the, what is that? So that's uh, 59 at 99 there. So we've got the feeder and look just in between the feeder and then the elevated part of 99. Uh, we can see some pretty heavy rain that's starting to fill up uh, right outside of that feeder road there as well. So that's the other big issue. Uh, as we said, uh, Sabir just popped over Willow Creek, looked like it was fairly high. We got word, Andy just mentioned a couple minutes ago from Jeff Linder that uh, uh, Mound Creek, 
Little Cypress, those are likely going to go over their banks. Um, and there you go. Once it's, again, we'll go back. That's from that's our tower cam right here at the KPRC2 studios. We're located off of 59 in Gessner. If you're not familiar with the station, we're in basically the Sharpstown area. And if you are in and around the station here, we are getting pounded right now. Uh, let's go back to the radar, guys, and let's show you what that looks like. Because um, this is heading towards downtown Houston. Yeah, and that's, so for, and that's, that's from our roof cam there back to the tower. So the tower is out at the front of the parking garage. I know I was just listening to see if I could hear it uh, in the studio here. Uh, and, and so that's right around our parking lot and look at the lightning just pounding out there. So, you know, that's gonna be one of the issues here if you're in and around the station or now that this is slowly starting to creep its way up the Southwest Freeway, we're going to be talking about areas. Actually, take the lightning off there for me real quick, will you, Caroline, just so we can kind of see. <laughs> we can't even see the storms at this point. There's so much lightning. Um, so we're talking about almost 1,000 lightning strikes. Thank you. So we've got the tornado warning. We also have that severe thunderstorm warning. And then, of course, here's the Southwest Freeway tracking, and it's basically just red across the board here. So we're talking about rainfall rates that are probably what, two to two and a half inches? Potentially even up to three yeah, inches of rainfall. Similar quality. to what we saw with some Especially of the when we're talking about these deep maroon colors, that's an intense downpour. This is why visibility has been so far reduced. We're continuing to show you those cameras splitting the screen there. And really throughout the last several hours, we haven't had a lot of moments where those cameras were looking good. No, they're not going to look good, at least in some parts here for the next hour or so. Uh, let's go out to our uh, to uh, Taisha Walker. She is live in one of our storm trackers as well. She's on 59, about to go into the belly of the beast here. Uh, Taisha, tell us where you are and uh, what, what, what we're seeing. We actually now have a observed tornado, Justin, that the National Weather Service has just issued. Okay. Taisha, can you hear me? Yes, Justin, I can hear you. So we are on 59 uh, southbound heading toward the Beltway East. Um, you could see we are pretty much in the thick of it. We're going very slowly here. I don't know if you could make out some of the vehicles ahead of us, but you could see they have their uh, flashers on, their hazard lights on as they try to uh, approach very slowly. You can see that the rain is coming down uh, pretty strong right now, uh, very strong winds as well. Um, so right now uh, you can see we kind of have a little bit of a low visibility. Uh, it's hard sort of making out the sign uh, ahead of us. It looks as though we are about to approach Beltway 8 right now, um, the frontage road exit here. Um, not much uh, in terms of accidents or anything like that to report. It looks as though some of the other drivers are taking it safe. It looks as though they're slowing things down a bit. Um, but we've just noticed this sort of um, heavier precipitation, I want to say, within the last 15 to 20 minutes or so. It definitely wasn't raining as heavily uh, before that. But again, okay. we are heading on the Southwest Freeway, heading toward the Beltway. Uh, you guys can feel free to check back in with us as we continue to monitor the situation. And if you are on the roads or heading on the roads, be sure to do so safely. Okay. Guys, back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, Taisha. I appreciate that. All right, so we've got an update on our tornado warning. We now have from a storm spotter, this is an observed tornado. So we do have verification. We've got eyes on the ground uh, that we do have something on the ground in this tornado warning here between Thompson's and Siena. I assume that's kind of the area that they've been talking about, Caroline, as far as we can tell. Yes. Yeah, so this is actually confirmed. It's due because they're on our radar, we're picking up on a correlation coefficient. Basically, we can see we're that picking up debris. debris is being thrown up into the air. That's located near Sienna Plantation, very close to Fresno, and it's moving to the northeast at 45 miles per hour. Just in a confirmed tornado, okay. folks need to be in their safe place immediately. Yeah, this is, can we pop that coefficient mm -hmm. up? If we, okay, all right, I'll let you do that. So basically what she's saying is, is that we've had this tornado warning that went in, in fact, about 10 minutes ago. It's a, a, a legend going until 2 o'clock. They will probably extend that as we're getting to 156 here. But uh, what we've been noticing with this as well is that there was an observed tornado on the ground. So a storm spotter from the National Weather Service. These are folks that have taken training to figure out what they need to look for in these storms. And sometimes these are difficult because they are wrapped in the rain, as Caroline mentioned. Uh, but we've been picking up not only on that, but we've been picking up on what is called a correlational coefficient. What that basically means is it's part of the radar that can spot 
hot debris that's in the air. So it's not on the ground. It's stuff that's in the air at this point. And that's what we've been when spotting. And I assume it's probably this fella right here, right? That's the debris ball that we're following there. And you can see it's moving quickly. And right now it's located just to the south of Sienna. Sienna. So okay. if we do have this tornado, it's just to the south of Sienna and it's continuing to move to the northeast. So very soon it's going to be in the Fresno area. We can actually even get a little bit of a closer view here. It's making its way really towards Arcola as well. It's in a very residential area near Sienna Parkway and Mount Logan. This is really the area that they've been watching as it continues to quickly make its way through. So this is the spot, Justin, where interior room, lowest level. Yeah, if you're watching us now and you're in and around Arcola, in around Sienna, the greater Sienna area, please make sure that you are getting away from windows. Get inside, you can take your phone with you. As I said, if you're watching us on the app, we will stay on here with you and give you an idea of what we've got. This is part of the tornado warning that they have an observed tornado on the ground from a National Weather Service trained storm spotter. And we've got some pretty strong signatures here. This velocity signature is showing whenever you get these colors get really, really bright. It's an indication you got a lot of wind that's getting wrapped around that. Red's the outbound wind, green is the inbound wind. Put them together and you create that wind shear. And that's what's got things really starting to spin. And we thought this would be the case today with that strong jet that's sitting over top. The jet stream is what I mean. Sitting over top of us, you've got the movement of the storm itself. They're moving 45 miles an hour. Jet stream is probably aiding, pulling that storm north or uh, upward, I should say, vertically. And as it does, it's starting to twist as it pulls up. And that's probably the situation that we've got here. So. One thing I want to mention is because it's moving so fast to the northeast, if you're just ahead of this tornado warning, they should start thinking about where they're going to be headed. We're talking areas like Fresno. You're not within this tornado warning, but it is heading in your direction. This rotation is from that observed tornado. Once again, that's Brazoria and Fort Bend County near Siena, near Fresno, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. And Justin, this is within a very messy thunderstorm storm. In fact, wow. if we zoom in, it's it's hard to see the reflectivity through all of the lightning that we yeah. have out there. So this is a dangerous situation, especially when it's surrounded by heavy downpours out there. You're not going to see this. You're just going to hear this intense thunderstorm heading your way. Yeah, well, that's the case we saw a second ago when we had our own um Taisha Walker that was on 59 going southbound. I mean, she's basically running right into the meat of what is going to be a pretty monster storm, getting ready to wallop a good portion of Fort Bend County, and then eventually it'll scream its way up and towards southwest and southern Harris County. So we've got a lot on the board right now. As we're getting close to the two o'clock hour, we'll do a reset here in about 15, 20 seconds for all of us, that, everyone that will be joining us at the two o'clock hour, either on KPRC2, KPRC2+, Plus, and of course, if you're live streaming us now at, KPR, at uh, Click to Houston, Dot com. So this is, wow, we've got a lot of lightning out there. So there's just a ton of things going on at this point. All right, two o'clock. It is meteorologist Justin Stapleton. I'm here with meteorologist Caroline Brown. We have been live on the air here at KPRC2, also at KPRC2 Plus and at clickthehouston.com for the better half of the last two to three hours with severe weather coverage. We have got a lot going on the board right now. Let's get right to it and get you an idea of what we're seeing. So we have one active tornado warning, that goes until two o'clock. I believe they're gonna probably extend that. That tornado warning has, oh, pardon? Okay. We're not seeing it anymore. That's meteorologist Cambrell Marshall. He is also here with us. Right now, we have not got word on that tornado warning, but we can tell you we do have a new severe thunderstorm warning. And this also has the capability of producing tornadoes. Just really, like the last one did. Every single warning we talk about today could yeah. bring a tornado, Justin. There's just enough energy out there. This system is moving quick. All of these have been pushing to the northeast, yeah. 45 miles per hour, damaging wind, greatest threat. But we can't underestimate the flood potential because that has been huge throughout the afternoon. It certainly has, and that's going to be one of the issues we'll deal with as we get into the afternoon. Right now, we've got our big trouble spots. Our storm system is on the move. We are starting to see some improvement in areas as well. You see the box just to the uh, lower third of me there over to the left. That is one of our multiple storm trackers. We have reporters and photojournalists out across the area covering what's happening in your neighborhood in some spots. We'll get to some of 
with them in a bit and get an idea of what's happening. I also am here with Andy Sirota and Lisa Hernandez. They are at the news desk. They have been covering any kind of power outages we have. We've been covering uh, uh, school closures, early pickups, late pickups, center point outages that continue to pile up as we get into the rest of our afternoon as things are really starting to crank up in some spots. And we've had what was now our fourth tornado warning of the day with an observed tornado least potentially on the ground from a National Weather Service storm spotter around Siena. We had picked up, if you were watching just a second ago, some debris on one of our radar signatures here right around the Siena area, but the storms, as Caroline mentioned, have been moving at about 45 miles an hour, and so they will not be in one spot for more than just a few minutes, but that also means that they are packing an enormous amount of wind power with them as they push on through. Some of these wind gusts in these areas, including to the south, that cluster that you see, basically that just lightning cluster, has been packing wind gusts of upwards of 60 miles an hour. That's a shot from our roof cam here at the Cape Air C2 studios. We're at 59 in Gessner, if you're not familiar with where the station is. That's looking back towards our tower and the 59 interchange right outside of uh, Gessner Road there, just north of Beltway 8, which is where the station is. We are getting pounded pretty good. We've also had a ground stop at Intercontinental Airport. I don't believe that that has been expired. If, if anybody in the booth or if uh, Andy, least if you guys find so that out, let ground me know. stop has just been reissued. We actually okay. have Devin Clark out there by the airport and he's on standby, ready to give us an update. Devin? All right, we'll get to Dev here in just a sec, but you see where he is from Kingwood over to Aldean, right at the airport. That's where we're seeing some of the heaviest rain come on through. Let's Now let's talk about some of the good news, right? Because I know it's just bad, bad, bad at this point. We are seeing some improvement in areas that got hammered earlier today. When you went on the air first at about 10 o'clock, 10.30 into 11, we were talking about Tomball, Jersey Village, out towards Wallace, Hempstead, Sealy, Eagle Lake, and then out towards portions of Waller County. We're finally starting to see the rain push south and east, but that means that areas like Intercontinental out towards Kingwood and Tascacita are getting hammered. I believe we have Devin. Devin, uh, tell us what you can see out there now. You're in the thick of it, my friend. Yeah, Justin, you can see really why that ground stop was just reissued at Bush Airport, and that's because the rain is pouring here on 59 North. We've been circling this area quite a bit, and we did notice, as you mentioned, uh, as you go south, the conditions ease up a bit, but when you go north on 59 here, pretty intense. We were in the Kingwood area earlier, which is notorious for flooding, and we were starting to see those rains pick up over there and some flooding along Loop 494 and Kingwood Drive. And really on Kingwood Drive, we saw some cars having to redirect. Some cars were even stalled. So here on 59 North, we are noticing that traffic is moving pretty steadily cars are slowing down here but the road's still very slick as this rain continues to pour on us and we're noticing some flooding picking up in the drainage ditches as you mentioned mostly to the right and on the feeder roads we're seeing cars create a lot of splashes there so you can tell that the flood levels are starting to increase and we want to just remind everybody out there to turn around do not drown if you find yourself in a situation where you're about to pass through flood waters, it's probably best not to do so because you really don't know how deep that water is. But again, right now on 59 North, as we continue on our way near Deerbrook Mall, you can see the conditions just steadily increasing here. The rain consistent, the roads consistently slick, and vehicles are taking heed to that for the most part. Unfortunately, we did see one accident on the way coming up here before we got on 59 when we were leaving 45 and getting on 610 we did see one car that was pretty badly damaged we also saw somebody doing donuts in a flooded parking lot which is really uh, advised against you don't want to play around in this weather uh, you don't want to risk damage to your vehicles or yourself or others so it's really best to stay off the roads if you can but if you do have to be out here it's really important to stay tuned to our station to our weather app so that we can keep you updated on what's going on. And again, as you see right now on 45, we're seeing the rains pick up. We heard thunder, we've seen lightning. So we are in the thick of it, as you mentioned, Justin. 
Devin, thank you so much for that. Also, you said turn around, don't drown. That is a hugely critical. Good advice. That is great advice, especially as we transition into the afternoon school pickup time. Flooding concerns really throughout the region. We've got widespread aerial flood advisories. Yep. We've still got, of course, that flash flood warning out there. Turn around, don't drown. Or as I like to say, when in doubt, find another route. If you see water in the roads and you're not sure, absolutely just turn around and or just wait it out because it will be pushing through. We're seeing light rain behind this system, but right now it's really inside the loop, Justin. Yeah, and we figured that would be the... the <laughs> The one shining spot, if we could say that, of this is, is that the timing on this is moving exactly when we thought it would move on through. And obviously, as you see, most of the inner loop, as you mentioned a second ago, Caroline, getting absolutely whacked right now. In fact, we've got our own Mario Diaz, who's uh, put his weather hat on, is downtown right now, and uh, can give us an update as well. Mario, what's, what's happening? You, you, just, you just got whacked with the uh, heaviest there, probably about the last 10 minutes, my friend. Yeah, I'm going to show you exactly what the scene is like right now for us on 59 Southbound. We just passed the 610 uh, loop, and you can see exactly what drivers are looking at heading towards Sugarland. I can tell you that this started rolling in for us uh, and my photographer, Byron Nichols, here in the last 20 minutes. It started with some drips. It was raining, and then it just poured on as if Mother Nature just turned on that faucet. Lots of lightning here in this area, making the drive towards that Sugarland area. And then the other bit lane, as you can see, northbound, very, very slow. I'm going to shift the camera here as we're inside of our uh, storm tracking vehicle here. This is our latest unit, Unit 32, with various camera angles. You can see what it's like behind me. And then, obviously, uh, we also have a high view, once again, right there. We did get reports here of some potential damage uh, over in southwest Fort Bend County. I'm in commute right now, Justin and Caroline heading out towards that area to give you an idea of what we're looking at. But if you've got a loved one that's making the drive home from downtown, keep in mind it's going to take them a while to drive through this. Uh, so you can see exactly what they're dealing with. Plenty of vehicles ahead of us. You can see those flashing beams there. The, they've got their flashers on because they're, they've all slowed down and they're just taking their time to uh, drive through this, navigate through this rain and through this lightning that has suddenly overwhelmed parts of the downtown area here in the last 20 minutes. Well, I'll tell you what, Mario, that, 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 is, <laughs> that is some impressive spray coming off of those cars. Hey, I want to give you a quick question before we let you go there. Uh, I know you guys are going to get into the thick Absolutely. of some pretty good traffic here. Uh, but we've been seeing close to about 900 lightning strikes within this cluster that's right over top of you right now. Uh, are you seeing a pretty good light show? And have you seen any sparks or anything that may have indicated like a transformer being hit or whatnot? I believe we're up to at least over 33, maybe closer to 35,000 power outages now from center point. You know what I will tell you? The biggest sign we saw was on four wheels. We, talked, we saw two strike trucks, utility strike trucks that were parked over at the academy uh, off of 59 there in the, in the vicinity there of Kirby right by Lakewood Church. Um, you had two vehicles that were parked there. Obviously, they were staging, getting ready to actually go and address any emergencies. They hadn't rolled out yet. But again, that was in the midst of this heavy downpour that we've seen here yeah. in the last few minutes. Um, they, had, they had not yet rolled out. So we had not seen any vehicles leave or address any uh, electrical outages. But without a doubt, we did see a lot of that lightning you were referencing, Justin. Whew, I'll tell you what, stay safe out there, you and Byron, my friend. All right, Caroline, who else have we got? We've also got Taisha Walker. She is out there as well on the Fort Bend Toll Road where we have seen some accidents. Taisha, where specifically are you? Can you tell us about the conditions? Hi, Caroline. Uh, so we just passed the accident. It was just uh, right before you tossed me here. Uh, we are actually... Um, to give me one second here, I'm trying to pull up the map. Uh, heading back on the Fort Bend uh, Parkway Toll Road northbound, we are trying to head to the Siena area where that confirmed tornado activity was uh, confirmed. Um, but as you can see right now, back on the toll road, the road appears to be clear. It looked as though that was a at least a one vehicle accident. We couldn't make out whether there were multiple vehicles involved, but there was an ambulance and the fire department there. But back here uh, live, what you're looking at in front of us, you can see we are on the Fort Bend County toll road heading north 
towards Siena, uh, and you can see that the roads are clear. Uh, several minutes before when we last spoke with you guys, we went through the thick of it on 59 South near the Beltway. We did notice a lot of flooding on the road, a lot of uh, cars trying to take it slowly. But as you can see, a stark contrast as we're sort of ahead of that storm. I'm going to toss it back to you guys until I speak with you next. Great. Thank you so much, Taisha. And we actually have brand new information. That cell that was moving through through the area is now produced a tornado warning that's going to be just south of Hobby, impacting portions of the Gulf Freeway near League City. That tornado warning in place until 2.30. As a reminder, tornado warning means take action immediately. You need to be heading indoors to an interior room, lowest level, as many walls between yourself and the outside as possible. There we go. Justin, the National Weather Service just issued this. This is a radar indicated tornado warning. Uh, this is an observed tornado warning from a spotter uh, moving east at 45 miles an hour. Let me put the loop on this here. So see just how fast this is moving in here. And not only that, but if you look at the signatures, you know, here's your outbound winds, here's your in Bound winds. The uh, radar is actually over here towards League City. If you're familiar with that, where that is, between there and Dickinson, that's where. If you've ever seen the little ball that's over there, off right off the highway, that's it. That's the radar site. So when these colors start to get real strong and get super, super intense in terms of their uh, neonness, if you want to think of it that way, it's an indication that we've got an enormous amount of strong winds that are pushing that way, and it's probably causing a little bit of curl itself, just because of the wind smacking out ahead of that. At least. If they're moving 40, 45, 40, 45, that's probably 60, 65 mile an hour winds out ahead of that, Caroline. Absolutely. So tornado threat, damaging wind threat, that is going to include Pearland, Hastings, you are nearly in this. Take your tornado precautions. Friendswood over towards Ellington Field, Webster as well. In fact, we're taking it yeah, down to a street level here. Justin, we are looking for that tight rotation. I think it's right over right over Central Pearland right now. So we're talking Magnolia Parkway to Summer Lane. What is that? McLean Road. Um, if you're anywhere between there, as Caroline mentioned, from basically 35, if you're long, I, or if you're long State Route 35 in Magnolia Parkway, you need to get into a safe space right now. Act immediately. Grab your kids. Grab your pets. You want to make sure you are not near the windows. You want to go to that interior room, a closet, a pantry, a laundry room. If you have a helmet, toss it on. Maybe grab those sneakers, but don't waste any time. You need to be getting into your safe place immediately. That tornado warning in place through 2.30. So it's really only 16 minutes. So you're going to have to be staying in your closet. And we're going to continue covering this as it's quickly advancing its way to the north and the east. That means right now it's Pearland in your safe spot, but we need to talk about communities ahead of this as well. Yeah. Brinswood, Ellington Field, anywhere just towards the east of Brinswood, that's, or Pearland, that's where we're really going to be watching out as this quickly makes its way there because 45 miles per hour, Justin, this system it's is cranking. booking it. Yeah, it's booking at this point. So you've got, there's State Route 35. So there's downtown Pearland. And then you've got Magnolia Parkway that runs across here. There's East Broadway Street. That's a big interchange too that goes in from downtown, sliding southward, Sleepy Hollow Road. We've got Country Club Drive, Pearland Parkway that goes all the way up as you work your way on up towards the South Loop. From there, Old Alvin Road and all of that. I mean, look, just in the last, what, two minutes we've been talking about this. It was off the map and now it's all the way over here towards Yost Boulevard and Sleepy Hollow Drive. So we do have, uh, as we said a second ago, this is an observed tornado. So this is a storm spotter in the area that has been out tracking this, that has seen at least, if not a funnel cloud, something that looks like it's trying to make it to the ground if it has not already. So we do have a good indication here that we've probably got some folks in those areas that need to get into a safe spot right now. And he means right now, just based on how quick this is moving its way through, you need to be taking action immediately. Even if you're not within the exact spot where we're seeing the rotation, this storm is still incredibly powerful, producing winds up to 60 miles per hour. That can easily knock down tree branches, turn debris in 
into really projectiles. So you need to get away from the windows out there and make sure you move inside this system. We're showing you the velocity with the winds, but it is producing heavy downpours, frequent lightning strikes out there. You're gonna be hearing the strong storm out there and it's moving through Pearland right now, yep. Justin, in place until 2.30, intense, heavy downpours out there with that observed tornado warning for Pearland. Yeah, so this is gonna be, you know, Pearland just east of there. If you go towards York Road, we're talking about areas around Friendswood. If you live just north of downtown Friendswood and some of the northern uh, communities or northern suburbs, I should say, up around there and some of those uh, some of those spots, that's where we, we could potentially see this storm system continue to rocket its way eastward. I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring the chat right now to see if we're getting any reports of any damage that anyone's seen in those neighborhoods, nothing yet. My guess is, is that storm spotter is probably in a safe space as well just watching this and trying to confirm as that goes through uh, as they should be we do love getting observations from those storm spotters but it's important if you're in this area to not try to become a storm spotter in this moment. They are trained professionals. They meet with the National Weather Service to get that special certification. This is an overwhelming amount of lightning, Justin. Yeah. Now rolling through the metro, really starting to hammer that east side for the first time all day. It is, and what's interesting about this too is that we had figured last night we were talking at 10 o'clock that we thought this would be moving through at around three o'clock or so. So the whole system is speeding up, which is good, meaning that we can get this out of here as we get in towards the latter half of the uh, afternoon and evening commute here. That is certainly good news. Unfortunately, as we said, for two o'clock, I know a lot of schools start to let out around two, 2.30. You know, Know, east side schools in particular from Galena Park over towards Channel View, Deer Park, Bay, uh, Bay Town that is, and over across um, Clear Lake. This is just going to be one of those situations you just got to wait this out. Now, these storms, as Caroline mentioned, have been moving at 45 miles an hour, so you don't have to wait long, maybe 30 minutes, and they will rip through your neighborhood. But that means that not only one, do we have an enormous amount of lightning that's starting to come down with these, but we also probably will have some additional power outages, as I would not be shocked if some of these strikes are hitting transformers, hitting tree limbs that are, are the winds knocking down, taking out some power lines. So we're probably going to see that number continue to go up as well. Oh, absolutely. Just from the lightning strikes, but also from the wind, the leading edge of this system, it's been producing really frequent gust, 40 to 50 miles per hour. That is bringing down power. And as a reminder, we're not just on air, we're also streaming online. So keep your devices charged, your cell phones, your laptops. If power goes out, you can still get our weather information on our website and streaming on our app. It is a free app and we're gonna be with, here with you through this event. We're taking a closer look at that observed tornado warning in the Pearland area. Area, we do have that tight rotation, Justin, right, yeah, there, right there, that purple pixel. That's right where we're seeing the rotation there. So it's at Kirkholm Drive near Southport Drive, Seaford, Seaford Drive, continuing to quickly make its way to the northeast at 45 miles per hour. So you need to be quickly moving into that interior room. Take this seriously. Yeah, I just wanted an area flood advisory as well. I'm gonna take that off here. Take this seriously and definitely stay off the roads as they're now underneath that aerial flood advisory. But Justin, this one is really holding that rotation well. That's right. That's a concerning sign to see when we've had this tornado warning out there and the couplet, the rotating winds is still looking healthy and strong. I, 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 my professional opinion, I think there's something on the ground here. Mm -hmm. So basically we're talking about Kirk Hall, Sabo Road over to Kirkholm and then Fuqua. So Fuqua, major interchange that goes from basically 45 as you stretch your way back in towards the eastern side of Pearland there. So if you were in and around any of these areas or even let's go a little further off to the Gulf west Gulf Freeway. Here. Right, Gulf Freeway from there from Kirkland. Uh, Fuqua, as we mentioned, Gulf Point and up to Palm Springs Drive. If you're in and around these areas, need to get to a safe space right now. Do not delay, do not wait, get in there. We've already had a storm spotter that has observed a tornado on the ground or something that is trying to get on the ground at this point. And here's our latest scan. So I mean, right whether or not it's point. on the ground, move into that interior room. That warning is through 2.30, 10 minutes of your time to protect yourself from what could what could be and what is a dangerous situation. Yeah. Justin, this system is moving very quick. Every single new radar scan we get, we see it moving tremendously fast. So right now it's moving 
It's about to move just to the north of Ellington Field. That's yeah, right there. near Genoa. Right near Genoa, Crenshaw Road. That's what we're going to be watching near. Yeah, we've got, so we've got State, we've got State Highway 3. Here's another spot too, as Caroline mentioned a second ago, it's getting about 2, 2.30, schools are starting to let out. Schools are one of the safer spots, and there's Bondi Intermediate Junior High School right there, and it looks like it's going right at it. So there's Genoa, there's three, 45s, or no, that's uh, 45s right over there. I believe this is. Gulf Freeway is yeah, right here. Yeah, the Beltway here. right there. Yeah, so That's there's the be, Beltway. Yeah, the southern edge of the Beltway. And that is a very strong radar signature, Genoa. You should be in your safe place. And we're going to track as it continues to push its way towards the northeast, 45 miles an hour. If you're in an apartment, by the way, you want to go to an interior room towards the center of the building, lowest floor of the building as well. If you are ahead of this and you have the time, grab that helmet. Always a good idea. Strap on those tennis shoes. But Justin, the most important thing is just getting into your safe spot. Yeah, you got to get in there now at this point. So we've got an active tornado warning. This has had an observed tornado, at least on the ground, a little further off to the west of Genoa, around southern Pearland. Uh, now looks like it's starting to move a little further north. There was Bondi Intermediate Junior High School, as I mentioned, right across uh, Beltway 8 and uh, over on the state highway there. So uh, still a pretty strong signature. And in fact, if you notice, if we go up a little further, let's jump in tight on this here so we can get your neighborhood view. Golden Acres, get in your, definitely get in your safe spot as yeah, well. Yeah, so we're talking about areas across Yellowstone, Drive, that's, what is that, Crenshaw, Preston Avenue as well. Uh, if you're over across Country Road, Vista Road, any of these neighborhood pockets in through here, you absolutely need to make sure that you get inside now. Get into an interior room, bathroom, closet. If your kitchen's in the center of the house, perfect. That'll work. Get away from the windows. We've already seen one of these earlier today that's had some debris that has been spotted, mm -hmm. uh, not only on the radar, but in the air as well by an active storm spotter. So these are live situations going on right now. This is an active tornado warning, and the signature is starting to look more and more intense to me. It's starting to look more and more intense, and we really haven't seen a lot of these that have been strengthening, and this is why it is so concerning. You can see that tight couplet there at Preston Avenue near Burke Road. If you know these areas, if you are close to this location, you need to be in your safe spot. Justin, one thing I think is interesting yeah. is that the center of this rotation is on the northern side of this tornado warning. Yep. I'm curious to see if they expand it closer towards Pasadena as it's moving more of a north-northeast as opposed just to the northeast. So areas just to the north of that warning box here, you're also going to need to start taking those precautions because of the track of that tight rotation, you can see those bright colors. The brighter the color when we talk about the rotation, that's going to be indicating the more intense winds. Unfortunately, that means it could do more damage. Regardless, you need to treat it with the same precautions. Go into your interior room on the lowest level. This system moving extremely fast out there. Justin, if we could go in a little bit closer, sure. Golden Acres seems to be the next area that we're watching out for. That's the East Sam Houston Parkway. Yes, yeah, Beltway 8 on the east side here. Mm -hmm. So you've got Golden Acres, Sycamore Avenue, Red Bluff Road, and I think Caroline's right. I think they're going to probably going to shift this a little further to the north. So that means folks along Hillshire Drive, if you're from there to Red Bluff Road, you need to take shelter now. Uh, in fact, they actually just extended this until 2.30. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. We've got a, another storm spotter, large, extremely dangerous tornado located over Southeast South Beltway, Ellington, moving east at 45 miles an hour. And I just got this from the National Weather Service. They're typing up a tornado emergency right now. They're typing up a tornado emergency. So tornado emergency, that is the most severe of the tornado warnings that they issue. This means it's an immediate threat to life <coughs> and property. Take this serious. If you know folks in this area, give them a call. If you think they're taking a nap, let them know that this tornado is headed their way. Tornado emergency coming. Northeast at 60. 
Now it's moving to the northeast at 60 miles per hour. This tornado is moving extremely fast, currently near Golden Acres. They're now expanding that tornado warning as well. Deer Park is also in that tornado warning now. The port nearly in it, Baytown McNair. They're preparing as this system is moving extremely fast. Make sure you quickly get into your safe place. Right now, the tightest of the rotation is near Randolph Road and Pine Avenue. It's making its way towards the northeast. So soon, we're going to be seeing it near East Boulevard and East San Augustine Street. This system is a strong tornado continuing to make its way towards the northeast. Justin, this is a situation that we do not want to see, no. and it's completely rain-wrapped if it's out there. We have heavy downpours. We have an influx of lightning strikes as well. You're not going to be able to see this tornado. We have the rotation out there. Currently, Pine Avenue in Red Bluff, and it's moving extremely quick. Like we mentioned, take this seriously as they have been expanding that tornado. Warning, Justin, have we had word yet on the new verbiage that they're using? Uh, nothing yet. I'm looking at it right now. So they've got a tornado warning that includes Baytown, Deer Park, Highlands until 3 o'clock. So about the next 30 minutes, uh, uh, we've got... A couple of, yeah, just south of Golden Acres. I think that's where we're seeing right around Hillshire Drive. If we do have any damage that is being lofted by this tornado right now, it is probably right within this neighborhood. So we're talking about West Pasadena Boulevard, Hillshire. What is that? Glenwood, Red Bluff Road, Center Street, East Pasadena Boulevard. Uh, what is that? Lola? into uh, Dunn Circle. If you are in any of this area, you need to make sure that you are inside. If you know someone in this area, you need to text them right now Call them. and tell them to get inside, get in a space, do not get near the windows. If we've got debris, it's coming through some spots at this point and, and we could see windows getting blown out. I'm trying to see when if we, we've got any information here from Weather Service. That when we talk about a confirmed tornado, nothing you can do is silly. Grab that pillow, put it around your head, grab any bike helmets you can find find. You can even grab Heavy a blankets. mattress, put it above the bathtub. Anything you do is going to be helpful to separate yourself from the outside. When we talk about a strong tornado, when we see the rotation on mm. radar like this, it is very close to the Deer Park area now, or just to the south of Deer Park. Yep. And it's continuing to quickly push its way to the northeast at 60 miles per hour. That is a fast moving tornado and that is a tornado warning that is observed as a tornado emergency came out yet yeah tornado emergency came out they don't have any new information with the exception of just uh moving northeast at 60 miles an hour then just telling people they need to take shelter and get inside now Take this completely seriously as it continues to make its way towards the northeast. If we zoom out just a tad, I think it's important to yeah, mention exactly. some of the locations. It is. There we go. Oh, wow. So what we're looking at right here is this is the correlation coefficient. It's showing us what's in the atmosphere and it detects things that aren't like the rest, which means this is likely debris. It could be branches or just anything that's different from fours. the atmosphere throwing up into the air. It's called a debris ball, and this indicates that there likely is damage ongoing with this system. Yeah, we've got a tornado on the ground. This here. is in the Deer Park area. Take this seriously. This is this is real. All right, so here we go. So let's do a quick reset. We're getting to 2.30. Meteorologist Justin Stapleton, I'm here with Caroline Brown. We have an active tornado warning, a very large, a very destructive, catastrophic tornado that has been confirmed on the ground. What you are looking at now is what is called a correlational coefficient. Think of it as sort of like a debris detector, okay? So this area that we're seeing from right around Lillis Avenue towards East 13th Street, Deer Winfield, Park. right outside of downtown Deer Park, we probably have some debris that is either in on the ground or being picked up with the tornado and being placed somewhere else at this point. That could be everything from tree limbs, as Caroline mentioned. That could be two by fours. That could be rocks. That could be anything that this tornado can pick up. The whole system is moving at 60 miles an hour. So if it's moving at 60, these winds are probably at least, at least, if not 20 miles, 80, 90 miles an hour at this point. And we'll figure all that out. It is, is destructive. This is a system that you need to be taking seriously. This tornado warning means act immediately. There is no time to wait. Bring your kids and your pets. If you know folks in the Deer Park area and to the northeast of Deer Park, you need to call them. Let them know this is going to be near 
Rome and Haas Road by 225, continuing to quickly make its way towards the north and the east at 60 miles per hour. Like we mentioned, this is confirmation right here. The radar does not lie. It's indicating that debris is being thrown up into the air, which would indicate a tornado producing damage. We cannot stress this enough. You need to be moving into your safe place immediately. And we are going to zoom out just a tad to show you where this tornado is headed. Wooster, Baytown, right now it looks like the actual debris ball itself. When we track this, it looks like it is heading in the direction. If we keep following where it's going, it looks like Lynchburg, one of the spots in that location there, it's gonna be continuing just to the south of Channel View. Because it's moving so fast, every single time we get a new scan, we're actually seeing it, we're actually seeing it quickly move ahead. So to the south of Channel View near Wooster, if I'm naming your town, you need to move into your safe spot, Lynchburg, Cody, McNair. Couple of spots uh, mm -hmm. while you're with that, Caroline. Uh, so we've got, this is a preliminary spotter report. This is from uh, one of the spotters out there. Uh, tornado just crossed Highway 8, damage to structures, businesses, and residents right across Highway 8. So that's 8 outside of Deer Park there, mm -hmm. where we were just seeing over to the Beltway. And then uh, this is from the Johnson Space Center, Emergency folks saying that they have a report of tree falling on a fence at Sony Carter training facility near Ellington Field. So at least we've got some damage potentially there at this point. And then it looks like we've at least getting some reports of some structural damage right across Highway 8 outside of Deer Park. There's the center. Okay. So yeah, this is the center of There's what we're looking at. It's just to the north. Okay. So we just got word that that Oh, and just got knocked out. We had a, a Transtar camera. That's 225. It sends, and it looks like that camera just went down. Said that they had some... Uh Rotation. Rotation on that camera. Let's see if we can see anything. It's going to be tough. As you said, Caroline, these are, these are wrapped in the rain. It's it's difficult to pop. All right. Transtar so is see. trying to follow it as it's making its way there it is. across, moving extremely fast to the northeast at about 60 miles per hour. Once again, this is in the Deer Park area, heading towards Worcester Highlands, Highlands, just south of Channel View. This is what we're looking at. That Camera is 225 at State Highway 146. 146. Okay, so it looks like we're getting the rotation there where we're getting some of the darkest part, which would make sense because that's where the center of the storm is. I can see some of those, yeah, some of the, some of the, looks like the wall clouds or whatnot on the, on the tail end of that. So anyway, what you're looking at here, this is a, a, a Transtar camera. This is Highway 225 at State Route 146. This is on an active, observed Tornado that has been on the ground, confirmed from a couple of storm spotters and damage reports that have come out uh, where we have potentially a tornado still on the ground right outside of Wooster. As we go from Deer Park, that's where we were seeing from Bellway 8 and 225 there, that's where we've gotten some reports of some structural damage from a couple of storm spotters that have been out in that area. The storm has passed there. We'll probably continue to get more reports as that comes out. Uh, but this is where we're seeing the potential for that storm, and it may still be on the ground at this point. And again, there's just an enormous amount of lightning, rain with this as well, Caroline, so it's going to be difficult to kind of go, oh, there it is right there. But that's why we have these Velocity products on our radar, so we can spot what we can't see with the naked eye. So we're talking about about anywhere from there was 225. So what are we getting into here? Looks like we're getting into some pretty rural areas right outside of Wooster. I think if you're up in Wooster, right around the Wooster area from North Bay Shore Drive to Bay Village Street, you need to get into a shelter right now because we still may have an active tornado on the ground at this point. There's Channel View. Notice folks that are uh, right around Channel View are kind of on the edge of that. I think they'll be okay. I mean, they're getting the rain and the lightning, but it looks like the center of where we're seeing the circulation, yep, it's going right towards Wooster at this point if you want to slide that over just a bit there. Absolutely. So that's Wooster, Cody, you see Baytown right over here towards the uh, end of the screen and then out towards Lynchburg as well. So if you're in and around the Wooster area, you need to get into a safe place right now. That's an interior closet, hallway, kitchen if it's away from the windows. Certainly make sure that you get in there, take the animals, pets, cell phone, everything that you're going to need in there as well. Get as many uh, walls as you can between you and the outside. We've already gotten reports of some structural damages. This has been on the ground right in around the deep Deer Park area. 
absolutely life-saving information there. We've got an update from the National Weather Service. They are still calling this damage catastrophic for this observed tornado. It is now located over the Houston Ship Channel near Deer Park. Now they're saying it's moving to the northeast at 45 miles per hour. So this is still considered a catastrophic tornado yeah. making its way near Worcester there. And if we zoom in, this is this is over the water there. Yeah, pull it a little further over towards me here. Yeah, Swing City Baytown. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so there we go. So there, so we're still we're still looking at what could potentially be uh, a very violent tornado on the ground. So what Caroline's showing us here, this is the velocity product. This shows us an indication of where the winds may be turning and spinning at this point within the center of that storm. Uh, pop on the radar real fast so we can kind of get an idea of, of what this looks like, you know, more of what people recognize of, of what we're seeing here. So yeah, I mean, basically just dead red at this point in terms of what it looks like. So yeah, and this is part of that whole system that's been blasting its way across downtown up to Kingwood where they've had uh, things shut down. Pearland has been seeing some pretty heavy rain with this as well. And this is all going to continue to blast its way over across the bay and then eventually in towards Southern Liberty County into Chambers County. Um, and just an enormous amount of light in with this as well. But the bigger issue that we've been dealing with here, at least over the past 20 minutes, is we've had an active tornado warning with an active observed tornado on the ground. We have already gotten re uh, reports of some structural damage in and around Deer Park towards Beltway 8. Uh, Johnson Space Center said that they've had some, some damage from trees falling down uh, at some of their training facilities on fences there as well. We're probably going to see more. I don't think that's going to be the end of it as this moves on through. But this at this point, if you are in and around the Wooster area, uh, we need to make sure that you're right up on, on, on the bay here that you are in a safe space. Anywhere across Wooster, if you know somebody there, text them immediately and tell them to get inside. This has already done some damage and we may still have a tornado on the ground at this point. Absolutely, and by the way, those Transtar cameras, they are moving it to try to get that location, to try to get eyes on this system. It's gonna be difficult because we have torrential downfall, downpours heading with this system. Now, I do wanna show you some of the locations that if this continues to be on the ground, Justin, where we're expecting it to head towards because this is a large tornado emergency that they've issued. McNair, Lynchburg, Highlands, these are all locations that they should be taking those precautions. Yeah, Cody as well. I think if you're anywhere there or if you live on the north side of uh, Baytown there from 225 slicing back up towards I-10, all of this, Wooster moving up towards this area here, you need to make sure that you're in a safe spot and you need to do it now because this storm system is still packing a pretty good punch. Mm -hmm. Even if we lose some of the rotation within this, as Caroline's mentioned, it has got an enormous amount of lightning. It has an enormous amount of rain and it's packing winds of at least 45, if not 60 miles miles an hour. You see the box there on the left hand of your screen. That is, uh, where are we at? That's east at Crosby Lynchburg. So again, Transtar folks are trying to track where the rotation of this storm is. It's just going to be very difficult at this point because it is. Just, there's so much rain coming down with that. I think it, it, it's one of those where we'll just have to watch uh, with our velocity product here, but that's a shot at Crosby Lynchburg and you get a, you get a sense that that is just not anything that you want to mess with. And we've talked to our crews that have been out for the past couple of hours indicating that they have seen not only some flooding on some of the roads as you get on the north side up near Fry Road and up to 99 moving into Montgomery County. Our own Mario Diaz, who is downtown, saying that uh, conditions were just falling apart as that system blasted through. And now the bulk of that, Caroline, is now pressing its way into East Harris County. So that's anywhere from League City to Laporte, as we said, Pasadena, Deer Park, Channel View, and then right outside of Baytown right now, that's where we still have that active tornado warning that goes until three o'clock. And so uh, they are not out of the woods yet at that point. And then of course, the other part to this too is, is that we've got all of our friends on the south side here, down in Brazoria County to Lake Jackson on down towards uh, the Matagorda Coast, which is getting pounded with some pretty heavy rain. And even some of the wind gusts down there could be upwards of let's say 60, 70 miles an hour as well. So we're talking about tropical storm force winds across a good chunk of the area, along with the, the you know potential that we still have this tornado on the ground that we've been tracking across you know around Wooster as well. Tropical storm force winds, that's going to be the threat here. Also, of course, the biggest threat is going to be that tornado warning. I do want to get back to that tornado warning. In fact, we're now hearing it's located over northwest northwestern Baytown. It's moving to the northeast at 35 miles per hour. What's interesting is they continue to show this slowing down 
Yeah, I, I, I was just going to say, yeah, it's interesting. It went from 60 to 40 down to 35 miles an hour. So an indication that we're, we're going to see, what have we got there? There's our scan. Where so that's a there we go, right scan. there near Cody, yeah. So this is, you know, the Cody area, as, as we said. So there's Baytown, just to the uh, right next to Caroline here. So there's Greater Baytown, so in, in the metro area, so to speak. And then, of course, as you go from there, Wooster probably just had that move on through. Mm -hmm. Now it's up towards Cody, headed up that way. And then eventually that'll be pressing its way right across the I-10 corridor. So we could be talking about, um, what do we got there? Cedar Bayou, Lynchburg Road, uh, uh, what's north between there? The East Freeway, North Main Street that'll go down into downtown Baytown. So from there, Hunt Road, West Archer, Garth Road, um, I'd say East Point Boulevard, if you're anywhere between there, as it crosses its way down towards Archer Road, you need to get into a safe space right now. Don't mess with this storm. This is, this, this is a big one. This is certainly a big one, and every single update we've received, the last one two minutes ago from the National Weather Service, they are still calling this an observed tornado. Damage is still considerable. That is concerning as they're calling it a large, extremely dangerous tornado. You need to make sure you are in that safe location, most recently located over northwestern Baytown, moving to the northeast at 35 miles per hour. We did just get a brand new scan here. And if we back it up a bit, Justin, you can see exactly where, yeah, just it was where going. it's tracking. Deer right. Park, this was at 227. Look how fast this system is moving. We're showing in real time where it was moving through. Yep. Because you can kind of see that and then show where it's heading. Where it's headed at that point as well. Uh, Lisa, Andy, if you guys could, could you uh, get a hold of CNR, somebody in the newsroom and see if we're getting any reports from Harris County Sheriff's Office, if we've got like either structural damage or closures or anything like that. We'll see if we can get that to everybody. Because there may be some folks that this just passed over and they need to know is it safe to go out at this point. Um, all right, so here's what we got. So our latest scan looks like this is kind of falling apart a little bit, Caroline. That's certain. I mean, what do you think? You tell me your professional opinion. I, I don't want I don't want to poly any of this, but but I'll tell you this what, looks if, better than what I thought my, we saw. If my mom was in this location, I would make sure she stayed in her safe spot. Oh, 100 percent be in your safe spot, but we definitely are seeing a bit of broadening yeah, of the start to widen out just a bit. That is definitely a good sign. However, when it comes to these systems, you can often see them rise up a little bit and then come right and then back drop down. down. Yeah. So that is something we're going to be watching with this system. Right now, the Titus rotation is by Cody there, continuing to push its way towards the northeast. Now at 35 miles per hour, this is definitely a messy one. And it's a part of a large, messy System. In fact, I do briefly. I was want just going to gonna say, yeah. Let's go. Let's go I back. I want to talk that. about the flooding because they have just extended that flash flood warning. Now this is in place until four o'clock. One of the interesting things with this flash flood warning being extended until four o'clock is that. Justin, this is in a place that hasn't been seeing a lot no. of rainfall. But the issue is any additional rainfall is right. going to be a problem. They've seen three to five inches. They can see another half an inch of rain. Yeah. And we're also seeing those small creeks and stream, the downflow. Start to pick off. up. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's what we said. This is like that sponge example. You know, the sponge is full. Mm -hmm. It can't take any more water. Thankfully, if you look just to the west of there, we're actually seeing some improvement. Andy, what you got? Uh, Harris County Flood Control District, Lower South Made Creek over its banks at Greenhouse Road. Flooding okay. of Cullen Park and Psalms Road is in Psalms. progress. The creek will crest and then slowly fall back within its banks this evening, but flooding will remain for several hours again. Yeah. Our buddy Jeff Linder over at uh, Harris County Flood Control uh, tweeting this out about two minutes ago. Okay, thanks, Andy. Yeah, I mean, and that's going to be the issue, I think, is that now that this moves through, as you said, all of the stuff that's upstream is going to fall into those creeks as it does. It's going to cause some problems. Psalms Road we, uh, did Greenhouse, that's the one that, that always seems will flood when we get heavy events moving on through. I think if you're around Little Cypress Creek up on the north side there, probably need to be concerned about that as well. It's fairly rural right around where the creek is, which mm -hmm. is good, but still, trying to get in and out of some of those roads, those access roads, I think could be uh, certainly some issues. So, so. 
Justin, an update on this tornado Yeah, so let's get back to this here. They are keeping the tornado warning in place. Okay. One thing that is notable is they have now downgraded it to a radar-indicated tornado warning. Okay. That's because that correlation coefficient we were talking about earlier, previously it was very easy to see. They're no longer seeing that, which may be indicating that debris is no longer being lofted into the air. So they still have a tornado warning in place until 3 o'clock for portions of Chambers, Harris, and Liberty counties, okay. but they're dropping it to a base tornado warning. Okay, well, like you said, it no may be... No longer observed. Yeah, we may we, we may see the rotation in the center of the storm starting to widen out just a bit, and, and that's certainly good. <laughs> the more circumference we can get on that rotation, the better off it is in terms for folks of trying to see uh, just exactly what we're dealing with here at this point. So, so that goes until uh, 2.40, that goes until 3 o'clock, is that right? That goes until 3 o'clock, yes, and they're still saying northeast at 35 miles per hour. Okay, northeast at 35, and that's part of that bigger system that blasted through downtown, that brought the flash flooding off to the west, and is now starting to press its way into East Harris County, and then eventually over and across portions of Liberty County, and just an enormous amount of lightning with this as well. Cannot stress that enough. So this is going to be from areas around Danbury, Alvin, League City, as you said a second ago, Caroline, now starting to see some lightning strike right across the causeway too mm -hmm. as we get into southern sections of Galveston County there around let's say you know Tiki Island Texas City for example uh, I'd be curious if we hear some more from our friends over at Johnson Space Center if they go out and get a sense of, of any damage that they've got on the facility as well because they've already said they've got a few trees down that have knocked over some um Fences and whatnot. And speaking of that, if you've gotten damage in your area, once these storms move through, if it's safe, send a click to pin. You can get it right on the KPRC2 weather app. We, we, we've still got the newscast to get to back four, five, six o'clock, as many as, as we can get. We'll show everybody what's happening out there in terms of any kind of damage. But please, please, please don't do it as the storms are ripping across your area. Wait until they're done. Once they're done, then you can go out, snap some pictures, video, whatever you got. Uh, we'd love to have it because that'll give us a good idea of exactly what we're seeing in terms of any damage that's occurred or just what the conditions are after this whole mess has gone through. Absolutely. We rely on those photos. And speaking of which, we want to show you a photo that was sent in. It's actually of a funnel cloud near Channel View High School. Oh, wow. Impossible to miss that ominous tongue tunnel coming down that is their stadium that's near the stadium okay right there wow i mean this is that's why tight. we've been seeing those warnings we've been telling you to take them seriously because of things like this mm, look at that that is a tight rotation within that as well oh yeah and you got to figure the whole storm is moving it, it eventually at, at one time at 60 miles an hour, it slowed down some, which may be one of the reasons why the, the tightness of the rotation in the center is kind of winding out, which is certainly good. Um, but you know, either way, we're gonna continue to watch this as, as there is still an active tornado warning on that, but I would be willing to bet Caroline, they'll probably let that expire if we don't see anything starting to tighten back up here they'll probably let it go at three o'clock and then maybe just replace it with a severe thunderstorm warning as it trucks its way over in towards Southern Liberty County. I also suspect they're going to let it drop for good measure. Just stay in your safe place. For yeah, that was, I just, wa just wait it out. Right. Just in case. But we will let you know the moment if they do lift this tornado warning early. But Mont Bellevue still underneath that tornado warning there. And Justin, I'm just pulling up some photos. We have actually been getting a lot of incredible flood photos. Oh, I bet. It is very scary stuff out there. We're seeing it all across downtown. Yeah. Areas like Herman Park is, is seeing a lot of flooding as well. I'm just going to take one moment to pull yeah, go this ahead. up. One thing that I keep seeing is people wading in the flood water. That is a really dangerous thing I to do. I would do that. Yeah, definitely wouldn't do that. One, because uh, there are all kinds of critters sometimes that get into those flood waters. I can tell you from um, years past being out there either after Harvey or some of these other systems, uh, the fire ants will kind of roll through that flood water as well. And if you've ever stepped on a fire ant hill, uh, you know it's not a pleasant thing. So, all right, there's another one of our Transtar cameras. I believe that is, uh, what are we looking at there? 99 at FM 1413. Um, still pretty dark and ominous looking over on the east side there. And I think that's what we'll see over the uh, next at least 30 minutes minutes to an hour as we're getting towards 250 here approaching the three o'clock hour this is uh, where we'll likely still see looks like we've got a new tornado warning is that a new one there on Mount Bellevue is I think that might be the same, is that same let's, one? let's okay. pull it back up there though let's just double check and then we're going to show you some of these viewer photos we've been getting sent Look at in that. 
Yeah, we'll get to that in just a moment there. This is a look at that tornado warning that we're watching near Mont Bellevue. That is Chambers and Harris County and Liberty till 3 p.m. This is the so same. That's the same one. They're okay. just continuing to reissue. Got it. Okay. Shaving off parts that no longer need to be a part of that warning. Okay, got it. Okay, let's go to those click two pins because you've got some really good ones on there as well. We've got some really good ones out there. Just formatting it so it'll fit better. Let's take a look at some of these click two pins because Justin, a lot of it has been flooded roadways. And I'm I suspect sure. as we go through the next several hours, we're gonna start to see more. Yeah, there'll be more those, coming out. The damage reports, the flooded roads. That's gonna be what we're watching for as we download these click two pins. Yeah, sorry, right, we'll talk, we'll, you get working on that and I'll, I'll stall for us here. Uh, so <laughs> basically, yeah, right. There you go. So uh, what we've been dealing with here over the last 20 minutes or so is we've had a potential uh, tornado on the ground around Deer Park. We've already gotten some reports of some structural damage from one of our storm spotters out across Highway 8, uh, Beltway 8 over near Deer Park. Johnson Space Center, as I mentioned, said that they've uh, actually had some tree limbs down, uh, possibly full tree, possibly just a limb at that point. They've had some structural damage as well in one of their training facilities, so we've been watching that very carefully. What you're looking at right now is we've got a couple of other Transtar cameras. That one is at, what are we at, I-10 and where are we at? I-10 East and Garth, so over on the east side there. And we're going to continue to watch this uh, as we go. So we do still have that tornado warning. It's an active warning. It goes until 3 o'clock. My guess is they will let that expire because it does look like we've seen any new intensification from that system. So that's certainly good news. But still, that's just one of uh, many areas that continue to have a whole lot of trouble out there. So that we'll have to watch very carefully. All right. So there we go. So there's East Beltway. That's at Highway 90. We've been seeing some improvement too. That's the good news. It looks like traffic's flowing pretty well. The roads are certainly wet, uh, but certainly not as crazy as what we saw about uh, 30 minutes to an hour ago when we were talking to our own Sabira Rayford. Uh, Mario Diaz, as I mentioned, that was downtown Devin Clark that's been up near uh, Bush Airport and looks like skies are lightening up just a skosh there as you get from, uh, that's Beltway 8 over at Beaumont Highway. So that's pushing a little further east, uh, moving over in towards East Harris County. And then eventually as you cross on over into Liberty County, or excuse me, into uh, Chambers County, that is, uh, moving on your way as you head on out towards uh, Winnie. So those will be the spots over the next two to three hours here that are really going to get hammered. But thankfully, areas to the west of us have finally gotten a bit of a break. Now, as you said, they've extended that severe thunder, or excuse me, that flash flood warning area out there towards Sealy mm -hmm. because they've actually uh, been dealing with some pretty heavy rain over the last, you know, three to four hours. It's not raining out there now, but we're certainly seeing some improvement, which is good news. But look at this. I mean, we just got a wall of lightning basically from Beaumont, Liberty County, East Harris, down to Galveston, all the way on down to Lake Jackson, Sweeney, as you press on through. So there, there's the action, right, that's moving on through and finally starting to get a break, as we mentioned. And it's really speeding up that cold. Yeah, it's cranking. It's finally pushing it out of here. Now, we finally got our click two pins to work. So All right. let's show you what they're looking like. This was here in Houston. This is Bell Glen and Bel Air. That's a mild flood out there. Yeah, but definitely seeing it there. Mushi. Yeah. Also seeing heavy ponding on the water. Cypress. A lot of these roads, you can't see the, the sidewalk out there at all. Wow. This is Look at that spring the drains are not keeping up and you can see they're still seeing the rainfall well and that's the issue too i said a second ago if you're in a cul-de-sac you know again it's great for the kids right because they could play you don't have a whole lot of traffic in there but it also is it's, i thought you put it a bit it's like it's like you know architectural soup bowl at that point and it's just going to collect and those drains can't keep up with the intense amount of rain that's been falling across the area and so that's when we get some of this flooding in fact oh wow where's that herman park that's at herman course. park wow look at that that is a mess it, it's a mess, and really every single click two pin that we see- That's in Simonton? It's not looking good, mm-hmm. Okay, this is the water running underneath her daughter's home over in Panorama Village as well. And so one thing that's notable is that when it comes to that storm water, it is gonna be rushing frequently. So it can oh, knock you off mm -hmm. your feet, yet another reason yeah. why you should not be, why you shouldn't be waiting in it. It's extremely dangerous. Yeah, definitely. All right, so let's get you updated on what's happening here. We're getting close to the top of the three o'clock hour. It is meteorologist Justin Stapleton. I'm here with meteorologist Caroline Brown. We are live on Click to Houston at KPRC 2 Plus. 
course, our website and right here on the main channel as well. We still have one active tornado warning. This goes until three o'clock. However, uh, this has been, I don't want to say downgraded because I don't think that's the right word, but it has been backed off is probably a better term for that from what was a tornado emergency across places like Deer Park, around uh, Pearland, and then around Wooster, just north of the bay towards Baytown. That's where we probably are going to see some damage once these storms are out of here and the sheriff's office, some of the storm spotter crews, and, and of course, some of our news crews will be able to get into those areas and get an idea of exactly what we're seeing. So we'll continue to monitor any uh, damage reports that come in as they come in, and they will likely come in. But we do still have this uh, tornado warning that's active till three o'clock. Flip over to the radar real quick, Caroline. Let's kind of show everybody what's happening. Uh, so we're seeing some improvement across parts of downtown in the loop. That's the good news. But of course, anywhere from right around Highlands, Old River, Old River Winfrey, Southern Liberty County, Alvin, Danbury, League City, Texas City, on down to Lake Jackson. That's where things are really rocking so far. Yeah, and I actually want to put this on a slightly longer radar loop. Yeah, this do it. Just in the past hour, but I think we're going to be able to notice it's speeding up because there was a few hours where it really was not moving at all. Yeah, it's pretty there. slow over here. You can see starting at 10:55, we started to see those and. I mean, it just really rolled through the area. We still do have that tornado warning out there. They actually, I'm sorry, they just expired that tornado warning. Okay. Certainly good news there. And yeah. I do want to point out that tornado emergency, that was the first one that the National Weather Service in Houston has ever issued since that product has become available. So that is why it was such a big deal. That yeah. is an area we're going to be checking on as this system continues to move out because where we did have that tornado, they're still seeing heavy to moderate rainfall yep. And the lightning's intense. Well, the lightning's intense, and I think that's going to be the big issue here for folks around League City, down towards, uh, you know, Lamarck, as you move into Galveston, uh, Seabrook as well, and right around Kima, you're going to get pounded with some pretty heavy rain and a lot of lightning out there. So we'll probably see more power outages as this continues to march its way uh, down to the coast. But thankfully, we are also seeing some improvement as we get across portions of the loop, metro area, downtown, heights, west side, Galleria, Katy, all of that that got hammered about an hour and a half ago. Uh, we're starting to see some improvement with that as well. Those aerial flood advisories, I think, are they? I may have turned those off. Check that real fast just because yeah. we had too much on the board and I had to, we had to prioritize what we were showing. It got okay. pretty busy. I'm actually yeah, gonna, so they're still there. Okay. I'm going to turn off the um Till 6, six Cambro? Okay, 6 o'clock. Thank you. You can see it's it yeah, is so still there extremely we go. pretty much everywhere is seeing those advisories really across Harris County with the exception of portions of Westview and Bel Air. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting too, because that's when this line sort of fell apart and then really started to pick up once again. So anywhere these green boxes that you see on the board there, if you're in one of these green boxes, that's called an aerial flood advisory, an indication that there has been some flooding. It is not life-threatening flooding. Where we are seeing that is right in between Wallace over across portions of Sealy and Southern Waller County. That's where they've picked up five, maybe nearly six inches of rain. I believe we had heard from Jeff Linder out that way. Mm -hmm. And so it's just going to take a couple hours for that to drain. They will probably let that drain, but it will take a little bit of time for that to happen. So not only that, there we go. Yeah. So let's talk about rainfall totals. And, and it's that strip, right? I mean, it's literally the strip just going right across the area. And that's kind of what we thought we were going to see. And, and that's where most of that heaviest rain is all set up. Absolutely. Now, one thing that's nice is as we're continuing to see it push through, a lot of it has already moved through and it's not training as much as it was. You'll notice areas on the south side of Houston, we're only talking one yeah. to two inches. Now, that's still a lot of rain over the short period of time. But it's not five to six inches. But it's not five to six inches. Right. So that's kind of the saving grace right now is that this system is continuing to push its way towards the coast. Yeah. But it's important to note that we aren't quite in the clear yet, but... You know, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I was just going to say, the light's there, right? Hours. Yeah, we'll get through this for sure. All right, we're going to send it back over to Andy and Lisa as we're approaching the 3 o'clock hour here. want to get an update on, on what's happening with the rest of the breaking news that's been going on across uh, this afternoon here. And, of course, we'll continue to monitor here, guys. But uh, give us the latest on what you're seeing in terms of, of closures, roads, yeah. schools, everything. What do you we're got? talking about the accumulations over the past few hours in Harris County Sheriff's Office putting out on their social media a number of high-water rest 
rescues that are underway this afternoon. Yeah, the 11,400 block of West Road, uh, Dory Middle School in Klein ISD. There's a high water rescue that's taking place there right now. I'll run through a, a few of them here. 20,000 block of Cypress Rose Hill, 17,299 Telgi, 20,311 Champion Forest. You can see the list right there on your screen. It goes on and on. These are a, yeah. a lot of areas in, in yeah. northwest Harris County. And, and Sheriff Gonzalez did um, put out there 11 minutes ago. He said, we staged our high water rescue vehicles in advance of the severe weather. Our team is responding to a high number of stranded motorists. And he goes on to list several addresses in addition to what we're posting here. Uh, they also advise several intersections that they're asking motorists to completely uh, avoid in West Harris County, uh, Bozeman at Evansville, Jones at Cypress, North Houston, 249 at Luetta, and a lot of areas that typically flood when we see this kind of rainfall in a short amount of time. Yeah, and a good thing that the storms are beginning to push on out. Areas in the east part of Harris County mm -hmm. into Chambers County now seeing a lot of that heavy rain, but we're going to begin to hear more and more about these high water rescues that are taking place as well as the flooded streets in West and Northwest Harris County. Yeah, and the big takeaway is if you don't have to be out on this, please do not. There are a number of school districts saying, uh, you know, pickups are scheduled with, with the students today as, as, as uh, slated. 3 p.m. ish is whatever everyone's pretty much following the same schedule but parents just be patient because it's a it's a rough go in and around those neighborhoods. Yeah we know HISD, Fort Bend ISD, Goose Creek CISD, mm -hmm. Laporte ISD among the school districts today canceling all after school activities but you made a great point uh, parents as you begin to venture out as these storms push on through you're going to have to deal with high water in some mm -hmm. spots you're going to have to deal deal with backs backups delays right. on some of the major roads and some of the side streets so you certainly want to take it easy. Yes, indeed. And if you have any questions, call your school's front office. Uh, KDISC said that they do have all after school activities still underway as slated for today. But if, if you're heading to get pick up your kid this afternoon, just use every precaution because the roads can be dangerous in some spots. Three o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. If you're just joining us now, you are watching our extended Severe weather coverage here on TV and live on the KPRC 2 Plus live stream. We are under a tornado watch until 6 p.m. this evening. We've seen line after line of storms move across our area. I want to go out to our Mario Diaz, who is live in a neighborhood where we could see a uh, deer park, where we can see a downed tree there in the street. Mario, take it away for us. Yeah, Andy, we're located off of Valeda Drive. Uh, this is just off of Center Street here in Deer Park. We just rolled up on this scene right here. You can see this tree, portion of this tree that's stuck right in the middle of the road and a basketball hoop that got blown over. As you saw in the graphics and as you had uh, Justin and Caroline tracking this storm, you saw exactly what was taking place here in this area about 30 minutes ago. That high intensity wind, that circulation. And we're just rolling up here in the last three minutes and catching this right in the middle of our street. Uh, we do know that uh, according to uh, care.com uh, that you had a, the chemical plant out in this in this city of Deer Park Dow Chemical. They they are reporting at 235. You had a process upset incident. Um, and that's around that time in which you had those strong winds. Again, this is right now here in Deer Park, just off of Center Street. We're on Valeda Drive, Valeda Drive. Um, and on the way in on this road, you can see that there are some fences that are down. Uh, we did see some minor flooding, nothing significant. Traffic in the area is moving around okay. But again, this is what we're just now seeing. How you doing, sir? You doing okay? Yeah, we're good. And so, uh, how was it when it rolled through here? Actually, I just came back from picking the kids up from school. You just picking up the kids? They got all the damages on uh, passing the boulevard right there. That's where we're going to head. Yeah. So I'm talking to a resident. He said he was picking up his yeah, kids from school, and he saw some damage over there on Pasadena Boulevard. You take care, sir. We wish you the best. But uh, that is the situation right now, and this is our first glimpse of it. Again, we know this was uh, a tornado that, according to the radar, was on the ground. Uh, we saw the debris uh, markings on the radar, so we're going to start making the drive now over towards Pasadena Boulevard here in Deer Park, see what else we could find. But uh, this is an area that uh, is starting to show some of the damage from this storm that moved through the city, through the, through the area, very rapidly here in the last 30 minutes here. Andy, back to you. Yeah, no doubt. And certainly uh, folks are going to get quite a shock as they make their way home tonight from work. 
uh, when they see just the scope of the damage as that storm just tore through there with, again, as Mario pointed out, an observed confirmed tornado on the ground in that part of the county. Uh, we do want to get back to our Justin Stapleton, who is uh, watching this tornado warning still in effect. Yeah, well, we got a new one now, Lisa, at this point. So with the tornado watch is still in effect for the entire area until 6 o'clock. This is the new warning. This just dropped about a minute and a half ago, and that goes until 3.30. It's a radar indicated, so... I don't want to say that's good news, but it is considering what we've seen so far. You saw the damage from Mario just a second ago, an indication that we probably are going to see a lot more damage out and across those areas. This one here is for Devers all the way on down right outside of Southern Liberty County, just north of Anahuac. Let me show you what it looks like as we get a little closer and show the... Uh, radar signature in terms of the velocity product. Uh, and it looks like if we do have anything here, it's right outside of Moss Bluff, right across the river as you get across the uh, Trinity River there. So we'll keep a watch on this, but this is our one active tornado warning until 3.30 as that moves its way towards Highway 61. So let's also start off, and let me kind of take a, a wider snapshot here and just give you a sense of what we're seeing uh, over the last hour and just kind of let this roll for a second so you get an idea of what we've got. Uh, so what we've had over the last four to five hours is a very strong system, very strong and powerful cold front that's been moving all of this heavy rain and lightning Thunder, certainly the flooding rains that we've seen, a couple of tornado warnings that have turned into some actual tornado damage on the ground, and then the flooding has been the other big issue as well. We've got a lot more on that. Our crews are out there, as we've been saying, over the last couple of hours. And, but thankfully, though, we are starting to see some improvement in areas that got rocked pretty hard earlier over towards Waller County into, uh, let's say, you know, Wallace area, Sealy, Western Harris County, moving on down south towards Wharton County. And right now, most of what we've got in terms of any kind of major issues is over across portions of Liberty County, moving on down to Galveston, Chambers County starting to get whacked pretty hard too. And then you see all of that pressing its way over into East Texas around Beaumont, Winnie, and into eventually Louisiana when it moves out of here as it does. Uh, that should be the end of it. And then it's just a question of what kind of after effects are we seeing in terms of either damage from the tornadoes that may have made it on the ground or potentially from a lot of the flooding, the flash flooding and some of the aerial flood advisories and some of the downstream areas that will have to take some of that water and start to fill up as well. We've already talked about Mound Creek running into trouble, Little Cypress Creek, which is running into trouble, and then, of course, right around Clay Road. As you get over towards Bear Creek Reservoir, also another spot that's been running into some trouble as well. So let's do a little zoom in in a couple of spots here. Now kind of talk your way through it. I'm going to take the lightning off just so we can actually see where we're seeing some of the heaviest uh, rain press on through. And so that's going to be in areas here from basically the mark over towards Jamaica Beach as you get outside of uh, the Beltway there. And then, of course, Liverpool, League City, Laporte, all the way up towards 99 as it crosses over towards 146 and 225 as well. And then, of course, that tornado warning, as we said, uh, out for Southern Liberty County. And then that goes until we get to about 330. So that is a radar indicated. That means that it's in the rotation that's being seen on the radar, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have anything on the ground, which is certainly uh, good to see. But either way, Still a pretty uh, dangerous situation that we'll have to keep a watch on as well. So that's anywhere from, uh, if you're over towards Devers, down 61. That's kind of what we were seeing, Caroline. So it's right outside of Moss Bluff, just as you get over the Trinity River there. If we do have anything that's trying, and it could be similar to what we saw with that one near Channel View, where it's just, it's got, you know, a little funnel cloud trying to make it to the ground, then it pops back up, then it pops down, then it pops back up. Absolutely. Something like that, yeah. And one thing to, to note about this area by the coast here is this is an area that earlier today, they had sunshine. Yeah, right. That's what that you said. Means, they didn't see anything, right? That means energy. That means this area has not been worked over today, which is why we're still seeing these storms hold together as they're pushing towards the coast. In fact, some of the bulk of this still working towards Galveston Island. And as it approaches, you're going to be feeling those intense gusty winds. Yeah. Not out of the question that we could start to see power outages in Galveston once this gets there. So if you are in Galveston, as a reminder, we are also streaming online. So if you do lose power, you can watch us and get the information that way. It's still yep. producing a lot of lightning. We turn that off just so you can see it a tad better. But if you're out there, you certainly hear this moving in. And behind, we are seeing clearing. Now, a few things I do want to mention because we've looked at a lot of images of those ditches where yeah. we have all of the water. Right. Important not to let your children play in those ditches yeah, because the gusty winds 
likely could have broken glass. You could yep. have shards of glass in there. You could have snakes in sticks, there, anything. sticks, pokey sticks. And those ditches also can be flowing rather rapidly. So it yep. can Great quickly point. sweep you off your feet. That's going to be a concern really as we go through the next several hours and yeah. watch those floodwaters recede because it can take a bit of time for that to happen. But yep. as we mentioned, it's really pushing its way towards the coast right now. Strongest of those storms pushing towards Bolivar right now, and really going to be the east side of Galveston that's going to see that intense rainfall and storms. Lamarck, by the way, really getting some of the They're heaviest of good. those rainfall. Well, we figured that would be the case, too, as this moves on down. As you said, they saw some sunshine. Haven't really seen a whole lot of trouble mm -hmm. at all today so far, so it's really just been a waiting game for folks down around the coast. That's the case from League City. And again, I've said before, if you ever notice where this little donut is right there near League City, that's the radar site itself. So if you happen to see like this little weird looking circle in the center, that's the radar site. And so the beam sends out. So this is what we're tracking right now. Some improvement on the west side, as Caroline mentioned a second ago. And it's nice to see that. So areas that still are under that flash flood warning out just from Sealy down to Wallace, that will likely continue at least over the next hour or so. I'd say as we get to probably five, six o'clock tonight, they probably will back that off when conditions start to improve. But we're still going to be looking all of these green boxes that she's highlighted here. These are all aerial flood advisories. So an indication that we've got some areas that have seen upwards of four, five, six inches of rain as that moved on through. And, and it's all fallen in about an hour or two hours. So we're not talking about, you know, an all day soaker that took from morning to evening. No, this was like bucket after bucket after bucket of rain that's fallen in some of these spots. So Trouble areas out there right now. Southern Liberty County, as we said, we've got that active radar indicated tornado warning. That's until 3.30. Which right now, if there is a tornado, the location would be just to the southeast of Ames, about 11 miles southeast of Liberty. And it's moving to the northeast at about 45 miles per hour. So it's moving. Cooking pretty good at this point. Yeah, it's moving pretty quickly. If this were to get extended, currently it's expected to expire at 3.30. That could include areas including Sour Lake, something to be watching and paying attention to. If you're in Sour Lake, start thinking, where am I going to go if that tornado warning is extended? Yeah, if it pops up at that point. Otherwise, the other issue with that is not only the heavy rain, but we've got an enormous amount of lightning with that, and that's now pressing its way in towards the base. So if you yeah, look at that. So basically, Southern Liberty County, all the way down towards the Bolivar, starting to see some of these uh, thunderstorms get a little closer to it as well. And we're talking, yeah, I mean, look at 16, I mean, almost 1,700 lightning strikes in just that very small area there mm -hmm. at this point. So still a lot of juice with these storms as they're pressing their way southward, but thankfully they are pressing south and eastward and should eventually move on out of here over the next, let's say, hour to two hours. And then after that, it's just a question of some of the areas that are flooded out. How much or how long, I should say, does it take for those areas to improve in terms of any kind of street flooding and the drainage distance to back off? But then what are we looking at in terms of any kind of damage? And then the story tonight into the rest of the week is the cold air moving in behind this. Look at that. We've got 40s behind where it's starting to clear at this point. Huh? We've got 40s and then ahead of it on the island, they are still 71 degrees. Right. That is warm out there. They saw the sunshine, which is why those storms still a bit on really the inside. Really igniting. Yeah. And I, I do want to show the winds as well because yeah, let's get to that. it's been breezy. We're starting to see that wind shift. We have it already in Brenham coming yeah. from the north. Down on the coast, Galveston, they're seeing sustained winds at 32 miles per hour, gusting even higher. So that's why we're still monitoring for those power outages yeah, in this area. That makes sense. Hey, Cam, bro, could you pop over to the Galveston camera and, and pop a live shot for us, please? I just want to kind of get an idea of what it looks like. We'll get that set. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, yeah, the winds at about 32 mile an hour sustained winds and gusts are even higher than that as you get towards Galveston. And that's because all of that storm line, I mean, it's, it's probably got, mm -hmm. my guess is, Caroline, if you're looking at that from the island and you're looking north, you're probably seeing a pretty healthy looking shelf cloud coming at you at this point. I mean, it's probably a bulldozer. A healthy shelf cloud. And when you're looking at this, I guarantee you. Yeah, there we go. Pop up the Galveston camera. It's going Thanks, to, camera. It's going to be looking almost like it's nighttime yeah, because looks, these storm clouds, it. they're dark out there. And yeah, it's not just dark, it's windy out there as well. Yeah, look at that. 
I mean, the, yeah, the cameras are rocking. I mean, the, the beach is about as angry as it can get at this point. So we've got a lot going on. So if you're in Galveston, it's been a fairly quiet day. Breezy, yes. Windy, yes. But it's been a fairly quiet day so far. But over the next 30 minutes or so, this storm system is going to hopscotch over the causeway, smack right into the island, and then the winds are really going to start picking up. Look at those wind gusts. Wind gusts of 48 miles per hour. That's basically like a tropical storm rolling right over the island at this point. That is something to take extremely serious. Even just winds like this take away the storm, which you can see is rocking around a cord with this camera here. That's what's going on behind us. That's enough to really take down tree limbs, oh, yeah. tree branches. So yeah. when this storm is coming through, or even just right now, 50 mile per hour wind gusts, you do not want to be near those windows out there. I I don't think I need to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyways because I've seen what they do on the water. This is gonna be a rough day on the seas. We do have a gale warning in place. Mm -hmm. That's higher than a small craft advisory. That means it is one of the most treacherous times possible to be out. Yeah, it's not water. it's not good not good day to take the boat out, that's for sure. Tomorrow will be much better the rest of the week. I promise we're gonna have decent weather and, and we'll actually get to that as we get to the four o'clock hour here. And you talked about it this morning. The rest of the week is cool, quiet, and sunny. It's gonna be great. We should be looking at some fairly decent weather. Well and looking and looking out you can see areas like yeah, starting Brenham to clear towards already Columbus here. starting yeah. to clear, likely still seeing a bit of cloud cover out there, but Near Austin, we've got some sunshine out there. So this yeah. system is pushing through, and we actually just got a brand new severe thunderstorm warning. Yep, that's right on the island there. That's going to be right on the island. Main concern is 60 mile per hour winds. Justin, I'm going to take off the lightning here so sure. you can see it just a bit better, but that is going to be in place until 4 o'clock. Also, just a quick heads up, we are hearing roads are impassable of at Wilcrest and West Belford. So that is something just to keep in mind. Wilcrest and West Belford, yeah. roads are impassable. And that is likely in a lot of locations. If you are heading out to grab the kiddos, give yourself a lot of extra time, even if you're not seeing those storms, because yeah. I imagine a lot of roads out there have water on them, especially in those hot spots in those localized yeah. neighborhoods. You know the one by your house, that one is probably having some issues right about now. Okay, and Cambrough just said the tornado warning is canceled in Southern Liberty County, so that's certainly good news. All right, let's do a quick reset. It's 316. I'm going to toss it over to Brandon and Lisa for a second to kind of get an idea of uh, what else we've got for updates uh, that we're seeing. And, of course, we'll continue to monitor things here, guys. We know that there was a ground stop in effect for IAH. We do want to check when, the, when we're at sea on roads right now for an update. Yeah, most definitely. She is in our newsroom monitoring conditions. They are also sea on. You've got some viewer video from all of the conditions as we're seeing the winds and the impact point east. I'm going to get to all of that very soon, but I want to start with the center point outages because they jumped as soon as we saw what hit in East and Southeast Harris County. So I want to show you what the outage map looks like right now. Right now, center point is reporting 102,000 people currently in our area affected by more than 1,200 outages. And again, if we uh, look, you can zoom in and you hit that number 85,000, you can see it's 69,000 now over the Pasadena area. And we know that's where uh, we believe that there was a tornado that hit that area. We're still waiting on confirmation, but we're getting lots of damage reports, lots of reports of trees down, indicates possibly there's lots of power lines down too, as we see there's extremely high numbers that have jumped up. Now I'm gonna show you what's happening with the airports. We're gonna go to FlightAware. We have this thing called the misery map showing you how terrible things are and because of the weather. So if we take a little closer look, we can show you right now at Bush Airport, they're having the most problems in terms of cancellations. Right now at Bush Airport, we can tell you there are 425 total delays at Houston's Bush Intercontinental Airport, 97 cancellations there at the airport as well. In terms of things at Hobby right now, let's take a look over there. A much different situation, of course. Smaller airport, 85 total delays, one flight cancellation. However, Hobby is right now under a ground stop. The FAA says that they are under a ground stop Actually, they just, did they just take it off? Yeah, we just updated. Okay, so Hobby no longer under a ground stop, so that's just been changed. And the ground stop at Bush has also been allowed to expire, but they are under a ground delay because of the thunderstorms. They say the average delay, 128 minutes. That's gonna go on, they say, at least till 9 p.m. this evening. So if you have flight plans, check with your airlines before you head to the airport because it's likely going to be 
a much different departure or arrival if you're heading out or expecting someone to come in. I want to show you some of the videos now that have come in to us via you from click Two pens and we have some images to show you right now. This is sent to us by D Summer 42 and this is the downpour of the rain coming in from her home. This is at Fry Road at the Black Horse Golf Course in Cyprus because you see it's just blowing across the pool there in the spa. Really great video, we appreciate it. Another click Two pens user recording video of downpours coming in their backyard. This image coming to us from Stagecoach and you see everything is getting drenched out there. A good soaking for her lawn out there. We have another video from click Two pens in 290 and Barker area and you see that big truck has got a, a good amount of water coming up the wheels there and a video showing more flooding and ponding uh, in the Conroe area as well. So thank you for sending all of the video in. We know that it has been treacherous out there. We're asking you guys to stay safe and continue to send us pictures and videos as you can do so safely. Um, we wanna see them and again, we're getting a, a little extra look at this one truck here, but we know that all over the situation has been uh, pretty bad throughout the afternoon, but things tend to be improving right now. That is the good news. We're gonna send it back to you guys now. All right, Sion, thank you. Sion Rose in the newsroom right now, and we're seeing that video people are sending in. We've got our crews making their way on the ground now, including Mario Diaz That's in Deer right. Park. That's right. He's live in Deer Park where there is that debris scattered due mm -hmm. to what was reported tornadic activity in that area. Mario, what are you seeing? Deer Park. Now, this is just what we rolled up on here in the last five minutes, but I'm going to start walking over here. I'm going to see, you can see you already have some individuals up on their in the hour. How you doing, sir? You all right? You good? That's Scott on the ground there. He's trying to get up there, peel some of that damage off that they had on top of the roof. I'm going to have a follow here so you can see exactly what the scene is like. We came up. This road over here is closed down because they have a tree down in the middle of that road. But as you start walking over here, look in the trees right behind Scott's house there, about 30 feet up. You can see that metal that's just wrapped around tree branches. It's completely just in the tree and it is just hanging there. You can see more damage right over here to my left. You have, excuse me, to camera left, my right. You can see right over here, you have another tree that's down right behind this vehicle on top of that wood fence right there. As we move our way back down, you're starting to see residents here in the area who are just standing around here surveying everything. This is your house, right, ma'am? Yes. Are you doing okay? Yeah, I don't want to be on TV. I understand that. I understand that. We're not going to put you on television. We're going to keep you going. But here's, you can see the back of our home and you can see the damage here right with this twisted metal. A top pole just snapped right in half there. And again, this is all happening in a matter of seconds for these people in the last hour. I was talking to this young lady over here Wednesday. I don't know where she was at, hoping to chat with her. But when we rolled up on this scene here in the last few minutes, we were just taken back because we we're actually trying to make our way towards Pasadena, towards the... Uh, towards the main road here, Pasadena, here in Deer Park, trying to make it to the main road using these back roads because we saw Center Street was completely backed up with traffic. So we're using these back roads in the neighborhood and we came across this street. And you're gonna see a lot of vehicles turning around. You're gonna see just why here in a second. How you guys doing? We're good. Which one's Wednesday? Huh? Wednesday, all right. How you guys doing, you guys okay? Everyone's blocked in, all the cars are total. There's like my car, it has no back windshield. Like, yeah, yeah like. How quickly did it roll through here? It like, probably like five, five, minutes. five, five minutes. minutes. Like, we went in hiding, and then in five minutes, it was all gone, and we came to look outside, and it's just raining hard. And then all of this was like this in five minutes. Yeah. All right, I'm going to show you. Thank you so much, guys. We appreciate it. You guys get over here. I'm going to show you some of the damage here now as we walk down. We're located on Hillshire Drive now. Hillshire Drive and Cowick. We're going to point up over here. You can see, obviously, more damage with this shopping center, the back end of this building here. Um, and you can see how that just ripped right through there, tearing out that wall. I'm going to walk right over here to just serving this damage here. Byron, we're going to start over. You can see down that road. We're looking at the west end now of Hillshire Drive. Let's make our way down this way. We're going to go down to the west end here of Hillshire Drive. You can see just everywhere right here. Trees are down. You have metal that's completely twisted on some of these older homes. 
and residents asking themselves questions. It's incredible to look up into the trees here and you can see right over there and up there. You can see all of these metals, these this, this metal wrapped around the trees and then you can see how quickly these branches were snapped by the way the wood is just sticking out and it's fresh. Uh, almost like it was a toothpick that was snapped like a big thumb came in and just went click like that and just snapped it. But watch out for this tree here, this trunk here. Byron, as we make our way down, you can see these people's vehicles completely covered by this tree along with that metal roofing that's right there. This tree cut in half at the very top. Hope you guys are okay. Hope you guys are okay. You mind if we talk to you? We're on live right now. Can we? Were you here when it happened? Yeah. So I'm gonna talk. I'm Mario Diaz. Tommy Berger. Hey Tommy, nice to meet you. Tim Lockfield. Hey Tim, very nice to meet you. I'm so sorry that we're having to meet under these circumstances. You never want to, but how are you doing? I'm doing good. So what happened? What was it like? It just you could hear the tree crack and stuff hitting the house and. Windows were breathing. Yeah. And my garage doors are Roof. old, and they're wood wood doors. Were you were you, were you hiding inside your home? Where were you? I was in the center of the house. I wasn't really hiding, but I, I didn't realize it was a tornado at first until the wind was blowing horizontally. How quickly did this happen? It happened real quick. As soon as, after it was going on, about thirty seconds, I got in the closet. <laughs> hey, fellas, <laughs> that that business there about to our eleven o'clock is completely damaged. What business is that? That's, I think that's Skate World. The, Skate World. The, the All right, Center Block Building. All right, thank you guys. We're gonna let you guys go. We're gonna get back to the studio. We'll be coming back here with some updates here shortly. Back to you. All right, Mario, we All right, do thank, thank you. you for that. And we are hearing from Caroline Brown confirming that the National Weather Service and officials from the National Weather Service will be in the area tomorrow to look at those affected areas to get a better idea of the mm -hmm. scope of these confirmed tornadoes they'll, here. They'll be able to determine the yeah. actual damage. And uh, let's get out to Taisha. She's out in the southeast side of Houston taking a look at some of the damage and the flooding. We see all that water behind you, Taisha. 